And we are live. Welcome in, everybody. We've got a good one tonight. An original six matchup between the Boston Bruins and Montreal Canadiens in Montreal for the first time in over two years. This is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, an old school rivalry here between the Bruins and the Habs. And Montreal has been playing quite a bit better since their coaching change. And Marty St. Louis has taken over. So this is not going to be an easy game tonight. And uh, I think we're going to get a good night of action that is a lot of fun. So appreciate everybody being here. Obviously, it was trade deadline t day today. A lot happened. Uh, a lot a lot happened um leading up to the trade deadline as well. It wasn't just today. It was more like trade deadline week this year. Um, a lot happened er, uh, last week as well. And throughout the weekend, it wasn't just a one-day thing this year. But uh, there was a lot. I'm going to be having a trade deadline recap video coming out tomorrow where once everything gets settled in, all the deals are official, you know, everything is, all the boxes are checked, then I'll do a recap video tomorrow and, uh, and talk about all the major stuff that happened. But it's a very busy time in the NHL. It's a very fun time in the NHL. And uh, all of these playoff teams are gearing up for that playoff run, hoping that this will be the year where they can lift the Stanley Cup. So welcome in, everybody. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Uh, we got a bunch. We got uh, BPX, Austin, Axie, Dag. Isaac, Jack, 100% Dork, Ghost, Nick, what is going on, everybody? Welcome in. Thank you guys all for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Going to get the poll up in the chat right now so everybody can start getting their votes in on who they think is going to win. Uh, let's make sure everything's spelled right, and we are good. All right, so get your votes in the poll. Let me know who you guys think is going to win this game tonight. I think it's going to be a fun one, but I am... I, this is a game that the Bruins should definitely win. You know, Boston is the better team this year. They should win this game, but nothing is given in the NHL. They still got to go out there and play. Um, who? Anyone else coming in? Uh, hey, oh, there you go, Ghost. Sweet. Uh, underwater, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. So, Montreal obviously did not having a great season this year, just 17, 36, and 9. But don't let that fool you. They've played a lot more competitive, a lot tougher since uh, Marty St. Louis took over as coach. Um, but uh, Boston, obviously the clearly better team this season. Um, you know, f wild first wild card spot right now. Not far back from Toronto either. Uh, big race going on right now. Not just in the Atlantic, but in the Eastern Conference in general. Uh, among like all the playoff teams, pretty much er most teams are all pretty close to each other. So. Uh, Every, every point matters. Every team's got a chance to move up the standings, and every team also has a chance to move down the standings if it doesn't, you know, if they start to uh, to fall off. So it's going to be interesting to see how the last five or so weeks of the regular season goes, and then we jump into the playoffs, and that's when it really, uh, the importance level of everything skyrockets, the intensity level, the aggression, everything that you worked for in the regular season all comes down to what you do in the playoffs and the postseason is really where things take off to a whole other level so it's going to be a lot of fun um nate what's going on welcome in canada what's going on uh yeah this will probably be the last canadians game streamed on, streamed on the channel this season because they are nowhere near a playoff spot so i am most likely this will be it for montreal as far as streams go um, unless there's like some random reason for them to be streamed again. But, uh, right now it, it, all that matters is the playoffs now and the playoff, um, the playoff, uh, races and seating and where teams are going to end up. Uh, yeah, underwater Bruins are right there. Boston has been one of the best teams in the leagues from January 1st on. So they're, they're right there. They have a chance to catch teams ahead of them. Absolutely. Uh, let's see who else has come in. Uh, Brian Fortnite kid. What's up? Welcome in. 
Uh, I mean, which trade, Austin? There was lots of trades today. There was. There's still some that the details are even still coming out on. We haven't even gotten the full details on the trades yet, because the I guess the NHL call center was really backed up at the end of, by the uh, by the end of the deadline or as the deadline approached. So there's some trades that we probably haven't even heard yet that are or at least we don't have all the details on. I know that there was an interesting one. Um, I'm so I'm surprised that uh, uh, <clears throat> there was there was an interesting one coming up, but or potentially that happened between Vegas and Anaheim involving Evgeny Dodonov, but we don't know if it officially went through or not. So that was still something that they were waiting on details about. Literally as I was starting this stream. Uh, yeah, I was a little surprised, Isaac, that DeBrusque wasn't dealt, uh, especially after they signed the tr the extension. Um, I thought, you know, all right, they signed him because they're going to move him now, and he never got moved. So probably in the offseason, you'll see him get traded, maybe around dra uh, the draft or something like that. But uh, I was definitely a little surprised that he didn't uh, that he didn't get moved uh zarbian what's going on welcome in logan welcome in thank you for being here mike and julie welcome thank you for watching really really appreciate it um so logan i thought that was kind of an interesting deal i think nick paul plays more of a playoff style a more physical style of game than matthew joseph they'll probably be pretty similar as far as offensive output i think paul just gives you more physicality and more toughness in the lineup as opposed to Joseph, who's not really that kind of player. So I, I think Tampa did that because they were looking for, you know, more of a playoff style guy, a bigger body, more physical guy. Uh, I am watching on Nesson Axie. Um, I, I think it's an NHL network game for people outside of the Boston or Montreal market. Uh, I think it's an NHL network game, but for me, I'm watching on Nesson. Uh, yeah, we do got a classic matchup, uh, Michael. Absolutely. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that's cool. Austin and Zarbian, your team's won. uh, junior teams won Friday. So that's cool. Good to hear. We're getting ready for puck drop here. Probably another couple minutes away. Um, yeah, Matthew Joseph, I think, is going to have a little bit more offensive output in Ottawa because he's going to have a chance to play some bigger minutes, probably get some power play time and stuff like that. You know, Tampa is so loaded with all the talent that they have that guys like that kind of get pushed down the lineup a little bit and don't really have any room on the roster to move up because they have so many other good players. But when you go to a place like Ottawa that's obviously still very young, and still trying to figure out who's going to be staying there and who they're going to be moving on from moving forward. A guy like Matthew Joseph gets a good opportunity to play bigger minutes, play on the power play, and really show you know that what kind of potential he truly does have. Uh, I mean, Nate, it would be awesome, but it will never come back because they're they're never going to play in the same conference again. I mean. I, unless the Red Wings were to move back to the Central, which probably is not going to happen, um, they're never going to be playing each other the way that they did back when that rivalry was hot. I mean, Red Wings are in the East, Colorado is in the West. So that's never that's never going to be a rivalry ever again like it was when they were playing in the same division. Funky, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Good to see you in the chat. We're doing the national anthems right now. Uh, obviously, both Canadian and U.S. And then, uh, and then we'll be getting puck drop in this one. Oh yeah, I miss it too. I mean, that was a legendary rivalry in the late '90s, but it's never going to happen again because they don't, they they don't play in the same conference. So you're not going to have those playoff series against each other. You're not going to have the you know four or five meetings during the regular season against each other. They play twice a year, and that's it. And they won't meet in the playoffs unless it was a Stanley Cup final. So Red Wings are going to have to find some new rivals in the East now. Uh, Mapman, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for coming by. Awesome to have you in the chat as always. We are, uh, we're one national anthem now away from puck drop. So we're getting close, probably another minute or two, and we'll be underway here. This is going to be a fun one. Excited to see the Bruins. 
Uh, best moment of the Bruins versus Habs rivalry. I mean, she's talking about a rivalry that's been going on for almost almost a hundred years now. Um, uh, it, I think it's hard to pick. I know the moment for me was when Boston beat Montreal in the 2011 playoffs, and uh, and scored the game-winning overtime goal by Nathan Horton in Game Seven of the first-round series back in the 2011 playoffs. But um, there, there's a lot of all-time moments between these two teams. Welcome in, Low Battery. Appreciate you being here, though. Rick, welcome. Thank you for watching. Alex, welcome in. Yeah, Axie, it's an NHL Network game. So this game is only available if you're in the home market of these teams or you have NHL Network. Uh, St. Martin, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Glad to have you in the chat. Uh, I don't think Boston is winning the East. No. <laughs> uh, they are not catching Florida or Tampa Bay or teams like that. But they're certainly a playoff team, and I think it's going to be... Oh, in unless you mean in the, in the playoffs, Rick. I mean, they could maybe go on a run, but they're definitely not winning the East in the regular season. No, no, almost no chance of that. Uh, wouldn't be the first time, low battery. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, uh, NHL DFS, what's going on? Welcome in. Dennis, welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. We are getting ready for puck drop in that one. Jake Allen in goal for Montreal. Jeremy Swayman in net for Boston. And we are about ready to get going here. Kyle, welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I think Bo Bo I got Boston in this game. They should win this game. Um, obviously, we you know it's got to be played on the ice. Nobody wins it on paper, but uh, I I'm thinking that the Bruins should win this game. As puck is dropped, Suzuki against Coyle. Bruins win it back, and we are underway. First period up and over the red line. Dumped in now by Boston. Thrown in here. Work down to the corner now. Romanov plays it behind his own net. Spins away from Craig Smith. Chasing on the forecheck. Able to move the puck up. And now Montreal will get it out. Through the neutral zone into the Boston end. Chasing after it on the forecheck. Played here by Brandon Carlo. Up the wall. Not able to get it by Cole Caulfield. Carlo sends it back behind his own net. Grizzlick plays it. Gives it away to Josh Anderson. Played down low now. Trying to work this in front. Canadians have it in the attacking zone. Long shot there from Romanov. No traffic in front. Swayman covers it up. And we get a whistle here. Scoreless start. Just uh, just under 40 seconds in. It will be an offensive zone faceoff for Montreal. Swayman with a good early save on that blast from the point. See what happens here off of the faceoff. Dvorak's going to come in to take the draw. And Studnika able to win that back for the Bruins. Still no Patrice Bergeron in the lineup for the Bruins. So Jack Studnika is uh, up on top playing with Brad Marchand and Jake DeBrusque as, I set, as he centers the top line. Marchand now into the offensive zone. Backhanded in. And a good chance there is we got a scrum going after the whistle. Allen makes a save. And now we got a big free-for-all back behind the net. Marchand got knocked over. As the goaltender covered up the puck and everybody gets into it back behind the net now. Stadnika in there. DeBrusque in there. And it looks like things settled down rather quickly here. 19.05 to go in the first. Just getting going. And we have our first taste of Bruins Canadians here. And Romanov's going to head to the penalty box. Two-minute cross-checking penalty against Alexander Romanov is going to put the Bruins on the power play. And Boston will get the first power play opportunity of the game. So Romanov knocks down Marshan after the whistle. Everybody else comes flying in for the Bruins. And uh, we have a, b a little bit of a scrum there, and Bruins go to the power play. Nope, Joey. Uh, this is an NHL Network game, Joey. As Boston gets ready for the power play here. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. 
Um, taken behind the net now. Good early clear from Jeff Petrie, and the Canadians send it all the way down. Uh, I don't know, like... Bergeron skated today, Logan, and they're saying that he's probably going to be back on Thursday. So it seems like he's close to being back, but uh, not ready to go just yet tonight. Chase, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Let's get some sub hype in the chat for Chase, new subscriber to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wes, welcome to the stream. Sasha, welcome. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Now Swayman turns the puck over behind his own net. Montreal here doing a good job on the penalty kill so far. Boston hasn't been able to get anything going. Finally, they bring it into the attacking zone. Pass across there. Stolen by Byron. And Montreal's going to clear it out again. Minute already killed off of this power play. Bruins not able to get anything going right now. Two minutes into the first period of this one. Matt Grizzlick will carry it up. Worked over the red line. Played up now to the blue line and into the offensive zone. Here's Pasternak out high. He spins away from a check. Passes it into the middle. Grizzlick with it. Back to Pasta. Pasta with a long shot there. Blocked down by the Habs. And they've got numbers up ice. Here they come into the offensive zone. Dumped in deep there. Suzuki plays it in the corner. Habs back on the attack. Only 30 seconds to go on the power play. Boss Duff, thank you so much for subscribing. Let's get some new hype in the chat. And welcome, Boss, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dumped in now. Bruins send it back to the offensive end. Canadians trying to work it quickly back out. Bruins do a good job stealing there. It's over to Clifton at the blue line. Played across. Shot in. Nice high save there by Allen. Smith can't knock it down. Final seconds tick off the power play as the Habs send it all the way down. They kill it. Bruins are 0 for 1 on the man advantage. We go back to 5 on 5. Three minutes into the first period now, Craig Smith fires that one high. Blockered off glass by Allen. Taken behind the net now. Wraparound chance for Frederick. He gets stopped. He gets tangled up with one of the Canadians there. And Hoffman will dump it back the other way now for Montreal as they go in on the forecheck. Jem, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Great to have you in the chat. First period action now between the Bruins and the Habs. Played up now by Montreal. Poked away. Taken back now by Trent Frederick. He will dump it in. And the forecheck continues for the Bruins as Lazar goes in on the attack. Trying to play this one out high. Gets past Felino. Grizzlick knocks it down in the neutral zone. Brought back in by Nosik. Canadians player falls down, but the Habs still come away with a puck and they get it out to the neutral zone. Stopped there by Carlo. Back the other way. He brings it in for the Bruins. Brandon Carlo fires that one off the outside of the goal. Collision with Felino behind the net, and the Habs come away with it. Hey, what's going on, Red Rubber? Welcome on. Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Out high. Long shot from the blue line there. Blocked in front. Back out now. Bruins clear. They gain the red line. They'll get a line change. In behind Allen, who dumps it off. Working it up now. Uh, Low-key Louie, what's up? Welcome in. Ace, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Hey, that's the best thing to do, Red Rubber. Best thing to do. It's worked up now. Cole Caulfield, pass across in the neutral zone. Dumped in. After it around the boards now, played here. Taking it down deep. Bruins looking to work it out. Canadians doing a good job so far on the forecheck, though. They keep it in. Takes it behind the net, looking for a play out in front. Armia sends it down low. Played now by Dvorak. He passes it out to the point. Canadians cycling in the offensive zone. Over for Romanov. That one deflects on the way through. Goes high over the net, though. Was a good opportunity on that deflection for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Moved up now. Montreal right back through the neutral zone after Boston clears. They dump it in. Clifton goes back to get it. Plays it up now to Eric Halla. Pasternak back to Halla. Now up to Taylor Hall into the offensive zone. He gets knocked out on the back check by Armi, and the Canadians come the other way as that one's dumped in by the Habs. Hey, Scott, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. 
Moved up now into the offensive zone. That one goes off the sideboards. Backhanded by Jake Evans behind the net over to Edmondson. Good to see Joel uh, Edmondson back in the lineup for the Canadians. He's missed most of this season. Just came back in on the roster and happy to see him healthy and able to play. Down in the corner now, Pizzetta and Evans hard on the forecheck, doing a lot of work here. Chance in front, and a big save there by Swayman. And now we got another scrum going after the whistle as these teams come together again, but that was a big stop by Swayman on the Chance in front. And that keeps this game scoreless as we're going to head to the first commercial break of this one. Bruins and Habs still 0-0. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. It is awesome to have everybody in the chat tonight. Thank you guys so much for the support. It would really mean a lot if you could hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't yet. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams are welcome and wanted here. Just uh, hoping to build a hockey community where everybody can come together and have some fun. Uh, Ryan, welcome in. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you coming by. First period action now, first commercial break, and a pretty active start here for both of these teams. So, little physicality early, no scoring yet, but some chances, some good pace to the game. I hope that uh, this is a fun 60 minutes of hockey. Ikeka, what's going on? Welcome in. Johnny, welcome. Thank you guys both so much for watching. Awesome to have you here. Uh, Carmine, welcome in. Mike, welcome in. Awesome to have you in the chat. Uh, pretty good, Ikeka. Pretty good. Appreciate you coming by. Cap, what's going on? Good to see you. Welcome into the stream. Coming back from the commercial break now. I am doing awesome, Cap. How are you? Good to see you here. And I thought we were coming back from the commercial break, but Nesson is just on a blank black screen. There we go, finally. Nesson was on a blank black screen there for a few seconds, but we're back now. Looks like the ice crew is heading off the ice. And we're going to have an offensive zone faceoff coming up for Montreal here as they look to take a lead. Swayman just made a very nice glove save on Paul Byron. Uh, yeah, sounds like he's possible to play Thursday, Ikeka, but he is close to being back. He is close to being back. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cap. That's, that's tough. Hopefully you feel better soon. Moved up now through the middle, over the red line. Bruins quickly get it out of their zone. And that one's dumped down low in the corner. Back over now, out high to the point, McAvoy. Long shot in, deflected in front. Rebound chance, Lazar just couldn't get it in by Jake Allen. Good chance there for the Bruins' fourth line. Now it's dumped in from the red line by Montreal. That one's ripped around. McAvoy after it. Big hit on Pitlick. And Riley with a hit down behind the net as well, but the Canadians keep the puck cycling. Riley takes it back now. Gets it to the blue line, but not out. Back behind the net now. Moved up the wall here. Taken by Felino over the red line and dumped into the offensive zone. Played behind the net. DeBrus comes in with a hit on Romanov. And that's going to be a tripping call against the Bruins here. Is uh, Brad Marchand's not going to like it, but he got the stick in the skates. And that's going to put Montreal on the power play. It, anytime you get the uh, stick in the skates of the opposing player and that player falls down... Um, you're, you're, you're going to be going to the penalty box. Yeah, so he, Marshawn takes down uh, Caulfield there and goes off for tripping. So it is going to be a two-minute power play for Montreal. Canadians' first power play chance of the game. Boston had one earlier um, and was unable to do much with it. We'll see if the Canadians can do a better job on their advantage. Yeah, Hampus, very excited for uh, for Hampus Lindholm being a Bruin Keika. Absolutely. Very, very excited. He really solidifies the Bruins' top four defense. As Montreal is setting up in the attacking zone here. Top of the circle. Long shot. Missed that one wide. And it bounces out to the blue line. Kept in by the D. Bruins will get a second chance to clear. And they send that all the way down.
Trying to move it up now. Minute and a half to go on the power play. Up into the offensive zone. Back to the point here. Working around the offensive zone. Trying to send it in front. Taking over now. Druin back out high. Chris Weidman back to Jonathan Druin. Back to Weidman. They play catch. Druin takes it now. And does a faceoff. Doc goes back to the point with it. Bruin's doing a good job of keeping them to the perimeter. Move down now to the corner. Rim around behind the net. And Weidman's not able to get over to keep it in. It's cleared back out to the neutral zone. Yes, Johnny. Joey, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Um, taken across now. Back out to the blue line. Kept in there. Long shot. Swayman makes a save on that one. McAvoy gets it into the middle. Trent Frederick helped with some help from Studnika. Up and out of the zone. Bruins dump it in. Down to 34 seconds left on the power play here. Uh, Napoleon, what's going on? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Taken up now. Played here. Across. Long pass all the way down. And that's cleared again by Boston. 15 seconds to go. Um, I mean, I like Giordano. For, I think he's going to help the uh, Leafs back end. And Blackwell's a, a, a decent, like, bottom six guy. But, yeah, that doesn't, that's not really, like, a roster-changing trade. But Giordano's a nice pickup on the back end. Power play comes to an end. Boston's back the other way. Marshawn gets a tap-in chance in front. But Allen makes the save. Long shot again here. Back door. And Marshawn finishes it on the rebound. And we've got our first goal of the game. It goes to the Bruins. Just under 10 minutes in, and Boston has a 1-0 lead. Brad Marchand out of the penalty box, puts it home for Boston, and they're up by one. Big goal there after the strong penalty kill. And uh, good start here. Boston getting the lead early. Uh, Matthew, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Saad, welcome in. Thank you for watching. Peter, welcome into the stream. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. We're getting ready now to get back underway. Bruins take the lead here. 1-0 over Montreal. 10.39 to go here in the first. And Hall is going to get kicked out of the faceoff dot. So Hall will come in to take it. And the Bruins come away with possession off the draw. Pasternak will dump it in. Canadians try and go back to get it. Bruins look like they're getting a line change. Moved over now. Nope, they don't. They just didn't forecheck. Same guys stay on the ice. They just didn't forecheck. Moved across now. Long shot there from Edmondson. Misses wide. Uh, yes, Johnny, I do. Chance across here. There's a chance for Pasternak. He wires it wide. It deflects up and out of play, and we'll get another whistle. Uh, very much not, EB. Nope. Um, I'm going to be doing a trade recap video tomorrow, Sod. So I'm not talking about 30 different trades while the game's going on. There'll be a recap video coming out tomorrow. We're going to be an offensive zone faceoff here for Boston. One back there by Studnika. Bruins trying to get it in front now. Riley with a shot. Nice pad save from Jake Allen. McAvoy keeps it in. Played down low by DeBrusque. Here's Marshawn trying to get it through to the middle. Moved up the boards. That goes off. McAvoy keeps it in. Plays it through to Marshy. Thrown in front here. That one gets down in the corner. Uh, I've never watched soccer in my life, so I don't even know. I don't even know what the soccer teams are because I've never watched soccer in my life. Moved up here, the sideboards. Taken away here by Marshawn, and they get it out of the zone. Stolen right back, though, into the offensive end. Montreal with a good shot. That one fired wide. Keeping it in now is Suzuki. Moved across, out high. Chance here down in the corner. Played up now to DeBrusque. Red line, and he's just going to make a possession play, then dump it in. Off the pad of Allen, 9-10 to go here in the first period. David Savard with it behind his own net. Plays it over for Romanov. 
through the middle. Malika, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. Back down behind the net now. Forbert with a hit there on Druin. Trying to move the puck past him. Druin sends it back to the point. Nobody's there. It's all the way down. Habs will have to uh, have to retreat. Weidman goes back to get it now with about eight and a half to go here in the first. Passes that one up. Gets it through to Schooneman. Up the wall now. Good pinch from Montreal to keep it in the offensive end. Dauphin down in the corner. Hoffman sends it back to the point, but it comes out over the blue line and sent back in offsides. And we got a whistle here and a stoppage in play. Another commercial break coming up. 8-19 to go in the first period. Bruins with the 1-0 lead. And uh, Brad Marshawn with the goal for Boston to give them the lead here in the first. And that's the only scoring that we have so far. Going to drop my upcoming stream schedule in the chat. It's not anything different than what I was posting last week. I haven't added anything to it. Um, so there's the upcoming stream schedule. Uh, I haven't added in this coming weekend yet because I don't know exactly what plans are for this weekend, but more likely than not, I'll be doing a game on Sunday at some point, but I don't know that a hundred percent yet. I'll add it in when I confirm, but, uh, some good games coming up the, uh, during the week. We've got Columbus against Pittsburgh tomorrow. Get a chance to see, um, Get a chance to see the Penguins again. Then a double header coming on uh, Wednesday night. That Vancouver-Colorado game in particular is going to be a big one. Uh, and then Boston against Tampa Bay on Thursday night. Lightning against Bruins. They, they played a couple times earlier in the season, but they haven't played in a while. Going to be really interesting to see both the Lightning and the Bruins post-trade deadline playing against each other that'll be a fun game on Thursday and then like I said there'll probably be a game coming up on Sunday this weekend but I don't know for sure yet uh let's see so we're at commercial break here first period action uh yeah no nobody wanted pk suban rick no nobody wanted pk suban new jersey was trying to get rid of him but i don't think there was anybody that was going to be willing to uh give up anything for him uh especially since he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year i mean and he's been he's been really pretty bad for the last couple of uh the last couple of years so i'm not surprised that nobody really wanted him <laughs> Hey, there you go, Red Rubber. That's awesome. That should be a fun game. No, the Columbus isn't a playoff team this year, but they are a very hardworking team. And we'll see what they can do uh, against Pittsburgh tomorrow night. So that one is dumped in now. We are back underway. Boston goes in on the four check. Owen, thank you so much for subscribing. Really, really appreciate it. Let's get that new sub hype in the chat for Owen, everybody. New subscriber to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Barry, welcome in. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, Chara did not go anywhere. The Islanders did nothing today except re-sign old players. I I was very surprised with the lack of anything from the Islanders. All they did was re-sign Parise and Clutterbuck and literally didn't do anything else. So um, very interesting trade deadline for the Isles. Back into the offensive zone now. Canadians on the attack. Bruins get it out. Sports Geeks, what's going on? Paolo, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. Great to have you in the chat. Uh, Docs have been so inconsistent recently. I Actually, they've kind of been consistently losing. Uh, I never know how to feel about the Ducks. Um... As far as, you know, which games they might win. I, I've been staying away from trying even. I've been staying away from betting the Ducks recently. Because they've been losing a lot. Uh, Jorge, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Let's get some new sub hype for Jorge in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't watch tennis at all. So I have no idea about tennis. Uh, I don't really watch any other sports like that. I just watch the hockey, football are my big two, 
and then you know basketball baseball like the other american sports but tennis other stuff like that i don't watch at all moves tennis soccer anything that's not like a real major american sport i probably don't watch 606 to go here in the first and we're gonna get a penalty now against david savard boston's going back to the power play Boston uh, will get their second power play chance of the period here. They were unsuccessful on their first one. Savard goes off for tripping as he gets the stick between the skates of Brad Marchand there at, in the neutral zone. And we'll see if the Bruins can be a little bit better on this power play than their first one. Uh, Sean and Ke oh, Kelly. Hello. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. uh okay well that's the world johnny and this is america so i it's not big here really or not that big here and i don't watch it and never will so oh well uh yo paolo with the 10 let's go what a legend chance in front as well for hall that one is blocked let's get some dono hype in the chat for paolo dropping a 10 on the stream thank you thank you thank you uh peter welcome in thank you for being here j dog welcome i definitely do not have the canadians with the upset in this one boston should handle this game uh but welcome thank you paolo get that dono hype in the chat that is awesome minute 15 to go on the power play here mcavoy sends it back up to uh through the neutral zone boston into the offensive and here's Pasternak. poked away now down to the corner rims it up the wall played by marshawn Played across now. Gets away from Shuneman. Penguins, what's going on? Welcome in. Really, really appreciate it. Great to see you in the chat. Back out high for McAvoy. Over now, top of the circle. Long shot there. Backdoor chance for Pasternak, but that goes off a of Petrie skate. Bruins keep it in. Still 40 seconds of power play time to work with. Set up in the attacking zone. Out high now. McAvoy sends it back to Marshawn. Marshawn across. Back out high, McAvoy back to Pasternak. Plays it down low for Taylor Hall in front there. Coyle, his attempt is blocked. Pasta with a blast and a save there by Allen. Taken back out high now. McAvoy still with it. Trying to go down low. Chance here. Allen makes a save. Puck behind the net. Thrown out in front. And Rem Pitlick is able to clear it all the way down. 10 seconds to go on the power play. Canadians with a big clear there. Lots of chances for the Bruins, though. Moved up now into the offensive zone. Across the blue line. That one doesn't connect. Power play comes to an end. Canadians carry it through the neutral zone. Into the offensive end now. Bruins 0 for 2 on the power play. We're back to 5 on 5. Trying to clear it into the middle. Bruins get there defensively. Clear it to the sidewall. Grizzlick chases. Back out to the point. Kept in at the blue line there by the Canadians. They dump it deep. Now they'll head off for a line change. Moved up now, dumped into the offensive zone. Played down low to the corner now. 3.25 to go in the first. Trevor, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Uh... Moved up now. Bruins back into the offensive zone. About three minutes to go. I mean, I like them both, Peter. I would say if I was like starting, if I was starting a franchise, I would go with Matt McDavid. But I like both of them. They're both absolutely tremendous players. Manta Ray, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Awesome to see you in the chat. We got 2.45 to go here in the first period. Bruins dump it in and we'll head off for a line change. Chris Weidman goes back to get it now for Montreal. So we got a 1-0 lead here for Boston. Just about two and a half to go in the first. Shots are 11 to 4 in favor of the Bruins. Wow, that is absolutely insane, Paolo. What a monster weekend, dude. That is awesome. Trying to work this one around now. Josh Anderson rims it deep. 
Played up the wall by Boston's D. Good pinch, though, to keep it in for the Canadians. They look to get the cycle game going. Playing along the sidewall. Back out high. Played across here. That one gets knocked in, knocked down. Goes wide of the post. Riley to Carlo behind the net. Boston up the boards. Taken now by Marshawn. Brutal turnover in the middle of the ice for Anderson. And Jeremy Swayman bails him out. Nice stop there by Swayman. And Josh Anderson given a gift there on a horrible turnover from Marshawn. But Swayman makes the save and no harm, no foul. We will head to a commercial break here with about two minutes to go in the first. Bruins still with the 1-0 lead. Uh, next game is Pittsburgh-Columbus tomorrow night, Matthew. Welcome in. Michael, welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Terry, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, the only thing that matters in goal for the Rangers is Igor Shosturkin. Shosturkin will start every single game in the playoffs for the Rangers, Terry. He's, I mean, yes, Georgiev had a solid game is, uh, in the, the, um, is it yesterday, but Igor Shosturkin is the one that matters. He will start every game in the playoffs. Uh, let's see. All right, sounds good, Penguin. See you later. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, hey, happy to have you in the chat, Trevor. Thanks for watching. We're at commercial break here. Final commercial break of the first. Boston up 1-0. And, uh, hey, what's going on, Andrew? Welcome in. Great to see you in the chat. Michelle, welcome in. Thank you for watching. Appreciate everybody being here. Don't forget, guys, it does mean a lot and really help the channel if you can hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't yet. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams are welcome and wanted here. Trying to grow a hockey community where everybody comes together and have some fun. Upcoming stream schedule is, I just posted in the chat, so uh, the rest of during the week this week is scheduled out, and you guys can see what's coming up. Bay Area, what's going on? Welcome in. Joseph, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. So we are back from the commercial break now. And it's an offensive zone faceoff for the Canadians. Bruins win it back, though. They'll try and start the breakout. Good pinch from Romanov, but he can't keep it in. Bruins chip it by. All the way down. Played here. Dumped back the other way. And it's an icing call against Montreal. Haven't had a lot of icings in this game so far. Uh, some games you get a lot of icings. Other games you don't. And this has been one of the games that so far that we haven't think that might actually be the first icing of the period but either way it's coming back down to the Montreal zone and Boston will have an ozone attempt one back now out high played here by McAvoy tries to get that one through to Pasternak thrown in front there that one gets knocked down Pasta throws it again in front Hollis sends it back to McAvoy at the blue line. Back now Taylor Hall with it. Near side circle. That shot just goes wide. Pasta gets it behind the net. Pass out in front for Hall. It just goes through his legs and the Canadians come back the other way. Joel, what's up? Welcome in. Taken now. Dumped deep by Suzuki. Behind the net. Down in the corner. Back to the point. Back down to the half boards. Right back to the blue line. Romanov with it. Long shot in there. That one gets gloved down by Swayman, and he will cover it up in front with 51.3 to go in the first. And it'll be an attacking zone draw for the Canadians, who continue to trail by one. Hey, Sal, what's up, man? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. We got behind the arc basketball in the chat. Thank if you guys like basketball, He's got NCAA tournament. He's got NBA doing some great work on his channel. I was actually on his channel Thursday and Friday um, doing some uh, uh, NCAA March Madness games. It was a fun time. So, Sal, great to have you here. Thanks for coming by. Thrown in, shot there. Swayman with another save with the glove. And it'll be another attacking zone draw for the Canadians. 
Uh, Alright, see you later, Johnny. Thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I mean, Tampa's got a rough... Uh, the East is a lot... I mean, the East is definitely better than the West this year. The East is pretty nuts. I mean, Tampa's got a shot. Absolutely, Peter. But so does so do the Panthers. So do the Hurricanes. So do the Penguins. So does pretty much everybody else in the East. So... Uh, it, it's, it's not going to be easy in the playoffs and it's certainly no guarantee. I and mean, the, the Eastern conference is absolutely ridiculous with how good all of the eight playoff teams are this year. Like the, the matchups in the postseason are going to be insanely close. Hey, thank you so much, Michelle. Really glad to hear that. Glad that you're enjoying the channel. Evans to take this draw against Coyle. Trevor with a two. Thank you so much. For dropping a dono on the channel. Let's get some hype in the chat for Trevor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Back the other way now. 30 seconds to go. Montreal back out of their end. Up into the offensive zone. Back out high here. Long shot. Pass across. That one doesn't connect. Blue line here, long chance in. That one goes off a stick in front. Here's another long attempt from the Canadians. A lot of their shots are coming from pretty far out. Bruins are able to send that one all the way down, and that is pretty much going to kill this period as the horn sounds. So we are through one here. End of the first period. It's a 1-0 lead on a Brad Marchand goal for the Bruins, and that is the only scoring of the opening 20 minutes from Bell Center. We are 20 minutes down. We got 40 minutes to go. And we will have some time now to hang out and chill in the chat while we wait for period number two to begin. Through one here, Boston with the lead. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Really, really, really appreciate it. Awesome to have everybody in the chat. Don't forget, it does mean a lot if you hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams are welcome and wanted here. And now we are going to have some time to hang out and talk in the chat while we wait for this second to begin. Uh, hey, that's awesome, Matthew. You are going to you are going to the Penguins game tomorrow night. That is awesome. I hope you have a great time, and I hope it's a great game. Uh, no, Joseph, you cannot show the game on YouTube. It gets your stream taken down and your channel deleted and taken away. It's literally illegal to show the game. All right, I think it's time to crack this now that we've made some inter to, to intermission. And uh, we're going to get cheers in the chat. We got uh, we got Rolling Rock here. This is a very underrated beer. Very underrated beer. One of the smoothest beers I've ever had. I feel like not that many uh, people know about it. So uh, Rolling Rock is very underrated. Cheers in the chat, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for all the support. An incredible season of hockey this year. Incredible growth on the channel. And we haven't even gotten to the playoffs yet. So um, really, really appreciate it. And uh, again, thank you guys so much. And cheers. Buffalo Sports Center, what's going on? Welcome in. Uh, nope, my schedule for this week is already set. I can drop it in the chat again. Uh, but the games that I'm doing this week are already set. Um, so we're chilling here at the first intermission. Bruins up 1-0. And we'll see if they can extend that lead in period two or if uh, Montreal is going to have comeback in them. We'll, we'll find out. Rolling Rock is a great beer, Barry. I had, like, never even heard of it until I was in college. And... The first time I had it was in college, and I was like, holy cow, this is, uh, this is some awesome, uh, this is an awesome beer. So smooth. 
and uh, I've I've been a fan of it ever since. Uh, nope, this is strictly a hockey channel. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know who that is underwater, but, uh, sure. DMV, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here, really appreciate it. Uh, I mean, I haven't watched Full House, uh, wait, Full, uh, do I like Full House, like the TV show? I haven't watched that in a long time, but I did like it when I was, when I was younger. Uh... D Wade, what's going on? Welcome in. Yeah, guys, for for streams the rest of the way, uh, they're largely gonna focus on playoff races or teams like fighting at the top of the division and stuff. So you, there aren't gonna be that many streams with teams that are outside of the playoff picture the rest of the year. Like th those games at this point have gotten pretty pointless. Like. Uh, teams that are, are not even close to being in the playoffs, unless maybe it's a light night on the schedule and they're playing against a playoff level team, like, like tonight, uh, where Boston is playing against Montreal, like Montreal season has been over since the first like couple months, but, um, you know, th there's a light schedule tonight as far as the g number of games go, but for the most part, it's going to be about playoff races and teams at the top fighting at the top of the divisions. Yeah, Buffalo Sports Center. Sabres are fighting hard for that playoff spot. Uh, D. Wade with the five. Let's get that hype in the chat for D. Wade. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, oh, that's awesome. You're going to the Caps game? Have a great time, DMV. I hope you get to see a good one. Uh, yeah, Hurricanes are a really good team this year, Joseph. Big time. Uh, who do I think will win the game? I think the Bruins win this game. Uh, Peter, Mansion, easily, easily Mansion. House is way more important than a car, and also, uh, a house is an asset where cars immediately depreciate and are always a financial liability so i'd much rather have the mansion than a lamborghini i i don't care about having a lamborghini i having a mansion to live in would be way cooler way more like imp like way more important too to have like a great house that you love all right see you matthew have a good night hope you enjoy the game tomorrow uh uh, June, I hope I said that correctly. I'm not sure. Uh, not sure if I did, but I hope so. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, oh, that always happens underwater. Always happens. Yes, Vegas won two games after I said that they were going to miss the playoffs. So, uh, no, it always, literally, like, when I did the video about Edmonton, they fired the coach and have been much better under Jay Woodcroft. So, Edmonton now looks like they're probably going to make the playoffs. When I did the video about, um, the Calgary Flames, you know, being a legitimate contender, they proceeded to lose the game that night 7-1 to one to Vancouver. Luckily, they've gotten, you know, back on track. They've been one of the best teams in the league since then, but they, they lost the first game after I did that video 7-1. to one. When I did the video about the LA Kings making the playoffs, they lost their first game after that. They got absolutely blown out by somebody. And now I do the video about Vegas being in trouble and potentially dropping out of a playoff spot. And they win two straight games after that. So I, the, the, it's unbelievable how I can jinx team or I can guess jinx myself with making these videos that all of a sudden it just completely flips the other way. I mean, Joseph, I, it's like, it's the first pit intermission. There's like 40 minutes of hockey left. Nobody said this game was over. Um, uh, Hride, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. 
Uh, I am watching the game on Nessun, Trey, because I am in the Boston market. All right, see you later, Joseph. Have a good night. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you being here. Uh, yeah, Braden Holtby going back to Washington, well, playing in Washington again, this time as a, uh, as a member of the Dallas Stars. All right, see you later, Joseph. Thank you so much for sub subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Really, really appreciate you, uh, all the support. Thank you for being here. Uh... Yeah, Vegas did not lose the rest of the way. Now, Kings still do look like a playoff team. So, uh, despite losing their first game after I did that video, they do uh, they have won more games. And uh, they, they are still in second place in the Pacific. So, Kings are still in good shape. Uh, is Boston home tonight? No, this game is in Montreal, Peter. This is the first time uh boston has been in montreal to play a game since before covid so it's been a long time over two years since they've played in montreal uh i mean abs are definitely a favorite uh we'll see barry they've been favorites in the past and haven't been able to do it um you know they got an early exit last year so we'll have to i mean we'll have to wait and see nothing's guaranteed we see top seeds lose all the time but uh ha avalanche are definitely a favorite this year and i love what they did at the deadline they just went out and they got better depth and made the team even better uh cam what's going on welcome in nancy what's going on welcome in so Bergeron, they, they had some worry about an infection in his arm, but he was skating today uh, by himself, and they're saying that he's probably going to play on Thursday night. Or he'll be back soon. There's a good chance it will be Thursday night against the Lightning. So it looks like he is close to coming back. Uh, no, not really, Matthew. I'm very happy with Jeremy Swayman. I, I think Jeremy Swayman is a franchise goalie for the Bruins. Uh, hey, nice Friday. Glad that you caught, or, uh, Friday. I, I'm, I always say the long I, um, but, uh, Hride, glad to hear that you're caught up in school. Glad you're not behind. Uh, Rask, he retired. Rask retired. Um, so, he's gone. Uh, Bruin, welcome. Thank you for being here, Bruin. Great to see you. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Well, the Canadians haven't had Carey Price or Shea Weber all season, Michelle. So when you, when you, you lose your top goaltender and your number one defenseman, uh, generally that doesn't make the team better, but yeah, it's a little surprising that they've literally been the worst team in the league this year. Um, but they, I'm not surprised that we saw a drop off from Montreal. Yeah, Caps Caps are still a playoff team, though, uh, uh, day. I wouldn't be worried too much. They're still going to be in the playoffs. I mean, Michelle, I could rattle off seven or eight teams that could very realistically win the Stanley Cup. It, it's not even worth trying to guess. It's literally pointless to even try and guess. There's so many teams that have a shot. There, there's especially the Eastern Conference. Like, all eight teams in the Eastern Conference are good. And, and they all got better at the deadline, too. So, um, you know, everybody in the playoffs in the East added something. So I, it's really hard to say, like, you know, who's going to win because I think the, the matchups are going to be extremely tight in the playoffs. I mean, Florida went out and made a – some big moves. Tampa Bay made a big move in getting Brandon Hagel. Boston got Hampus Lindholm. Um, Toronto got Mark Giordano. The Rangers added Cop and some other smaller pieces. The Penguins added Ricard Raquel. The Capitals brought back Marcus Johansson. Um, 
who am I forgetting? Uh, Carolina added Max Domi. Like, everybody went out and made additions. So, it's going to be extremely tough in the playoffs. Because uh, he was injured, Peter. He tried to come back, but he was too injured to play. So, he retired. It was 100% because of injury. Uh, hey, Bobby, been a member now for 13 months. What a legend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, really appreciate the support. Member hype for Bobby, 13 months on the channel. That is awesome, man. Uh, yeah, looks like it, Paolo. Mrazic got waived, which is hilarious. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Jack Campbell and the rookie for Montreal, or for Montreal, for the Maple Leafs in goal. So we'll see how it goes. That's, I don't know. That's, that's going to be interesting come playoff time. I mean, Rumble, there really weren't any second line centers out there. I mean, to Tomas Hurdle would have been the 2C to get, but he signed an eight-year extension with San Jose. So there really wasn't a second line center to go get. I mean, Andrew Kopp isn't really a second liner. He's a third third line guy. Ricard Raquel's a winger. Claude Giroux straight up said no to the Bruins, so they weren't going to be able to be in on Giroux. There, there really wasn't anybody out there to get. Uh, Frosty, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Jason, welcome. Thank you for being here. Good to see you in the chat. I, I'm surprised DeBrus didn't get moved, but, um, I, I guess it's going to be an off-season thing. Uh, Phil, I thought Philadelphia was going to get more, honestly, given, given the fact that all, all these other trades have led to pretty darn big returns. I mean, Hagel got Chicago an absolute King's ransom. Um, Raquel fetched a lot for Anaheim. Andrew Kopp got a pretty big return for Winnipeg. Like all of these moves got big returns. And then I didn't think Philly got that much for Giroux. I mean, it's going to depend on if Tippett works out. Like, if, if if Owen Tippett becomes, like, a solid second-line scoring winger, then then sh that will end up being a much better trade for Philadelphia than what it looks like this right now. Um, but given how high the prices were on all of those other... Uh, all of those other players were, I'm surprised that they didn't get more for Giroux, but... I guess the him being a rental kind of drove the price down rather than being a guy with, you know, term left on his contract. Although Raquel, Raquel is a UFA as well, and he got a pretty big return from Pittsburgh. So, I don't know. I, f I thought it was a little light, honestly. Hey, that is awesome news, Bobby. Really, really great to hear. Glad that it is going well and glad that you are getting better. That is fantastic news. We get ready here for puck drop in the second uh, period. Yeah, Taylor Taylor Radish got his first goal for Chicago yesterday. Again, like he could be a good player now, getting more minutes with the Blackhawks than he was going to get You know, buried in the Tampa lineup. He could end up being a pretty darn good player. Yeah, I'm surprised that DeBrus didn't get moved. But again, that, with him under contract now, that's something that they can do in the offseason. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's like a draft day trade or something. Where like on, on draft day, they end up making some sort of trade there. But I'm, a, I'm definitely surprised that he didn't go. I would have liked the Bruins to add a forward. I wanted them to be in on Cop or Raquel, particularly one of those two. But then seeing the price that they ended up being traded for, there there was no way Boston was going to match that price that the Rangers gave up for Cop or that uh, the Penguins gave up for Ricard Raquel. So... With them, you know, I think it's almost better that the Bruins didn't try and reach for somebody like that because the East is so tough this year. Even with additions, you're not guaranteed to go all the way. Like, you still have to face, like, Florida, Tampa, Toronto, somebody like that. You're not guaranteed to go anywhere. So, 
you know, I love the Lindholm deal because they got him now extended and he's going to be a key part to the blue line along with Charlie McAvoy and Brandon Carlo for the foreseeable future. So like that's the deal that makes sense beyond just this year. If, if they were going to pay, have to pay a premium for a pending UFA like Ricard Raquel that they probably weren't going to be able to re-sign, I almost, I feel like the price was, was just too high to actually do that. So that's just my opinion. I... I don't really have any complaints. Um, I, I like Lindholm being added to the blue line, and we'll see what happens. I mean, it, it's the playoffs. We've seen upsets before. Anything can happen. And uh, and it's going to be an absolute dogfight in the Eastern Conference because all of these playoff teams in the East added to their lineups. So it's going to be really, really interesting come playoff time. Anyway, we are back underway now. Second period. Puck is just dropped. Canadians trying to tie it. Boston looking to extend their lead. They carry that one and pass it up to the neutral zone. Dumped in deep there by Frederick. And Charlie Coyle goes in on the forecheck. I mean, yeah, Tampa and Florida were stacked already. And now they're even more stacked. So the chances of Boston getting by those two teams is probably not very high. But... Um, I don't think adding Ricard Raquel would have really given them changed the equation all that much. You know, I still think they wouldn't be at the same level as Tampa or Florida roster wise. Uh, Lindholm's not in the lineup for, for Boston. Axie. He hasn't, he hasn't moved yet. Um, or well, Bo Boston's up in Canada right now. So the Bruins are, are, I believe going back home after this, game and I think he'll meet up with the Bruins in Boston and play on Thursday as Marshawn brings it into the offensive zone but he's not in the lineup for this game down low now Bruins trying to work it around the attacking end uh Smaquidgey, what's going on welcome in thank you for being here really really appreciate it yeah, I'm glad Boston got a defenseman. I think that, for me, that was the number one thing that they needed. And I wanted them to get a top four guy, and they did. So they went out and did what I wanted them to do. I can't complain about it. Uh, Barry, everybody has a very tough first round. The entire Eastern Conference is a tough first round. There's not one team that has an easy first round. As that's brought into the offensive zone, Anderson sh Anderson's shot is blocked by Forbert. DeBrus being chased now, sends it up the boards. Bruins chip it out. Here comes Taylor Hall up ice into the offensive zone. Shot there. That one gets knocked down. Uh, so Joel, I'd love to see the Bruins move up, but it's going to be tough. I mean, the, the Atlantic Division top four is absolutely loaded. Absolutely loaded. Angelo, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Two and a half minutes now into the second. Bruins in the offensive zone. McAvoy with a long shot. No traffic in front, though. And uh, that one gets covered up there by Allen as he makes a save. And we'll get an ozone draw for the Bruins. Yeah, Lindholm's a really good D-man. Absolutely, Logan. I mean, I th but it gives the Bruins options because Boston can play him either with Carlo or they can play him with McAvoy. And it, and it gives them options on the, on the defense. It makes their overall defense a lot deeper than it was without him. No, nothing's going to be easy, Barry. Absolutely not. Canadians bring it in now to the offensive zone. Played back here across. Shot in by Edmondson. Pad save Swayman. Up the wall it goes. Steven, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. That one's dumped back down the other way. Bruins clear it out. Canadians take it behind their own net. Regroup. Up and out of the zone now. Jeff Petrie, another guy that, you know, people thought may be moved at the deadline, but ends up staying in Montreal. Uh, I do not have statistics on that, Jason, no. I feel like home teams definitely do win more, but I don't know if it's a huge deal, game, I don't think it's like a huge game breaker, I think it's more about who's the better team. I would love to see Florida versus Tampa Bay again, uh, Raji Ghost, absolutely. Would love to see it. That'd be an epic series. As it's back now, big hit there. Pizzetta hammers Grizzlick in the neutral zone. And it's bunch, 
back into the offensive zone now here. Montreal goes in on the four check. Taken back now. Played up over the red, uh, red line. Backhanded in by Boston. Craig Smith chases after on the four check. Chris Weidman passes it up. Forbert with a hit there. And the Bruins are off sides as that puck did come out of the zone. And we'll get a whistle here with 15.54 to go in the second. Neutral zone faceoff coming up. Bruins still with the only goal of this game. As uh, Brad Marchand was able to put one by Jake Allen. And er the rest of the way, the goalies have been good. Derek, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Awesome to see you in the chat. Take him back now. Bruins regrouping. It's Connor Clifton in his own zone. Moved up now. Frederick goes in after it. He lays a hit on Paul Byron in the corner. Canadians move the puck. Up the wall it goes. Over the red line. Dumped into the offensive end there by Weidman. Canadians will get the four check going. Bruins try and... Get it up and out of the zone. Here's Mike Riley. He gives it away. Chance for the Canadians in front. Nice save there by Swayman. Puck ends up in the corner. Back to David Savard. Out high. Almost poked away. This time Bruins finally get it out. Here they come with some speed. Jake DeBrusque. Top of the circle shot and a glove save there by Allen. Moved up now. That one. Druin wanted a penalty call. Not going to get one as he's shoved off by the Bruins D. Armia with a sharp angle shot. Knocked down on the way through. Ends up out in the high slot. Bruins finally get to it. And they'll pass it up now. Marshawn into the offensive zone. Pass across. Too far in front there to uh, connect with DeBrusque. Back now to McAvoy. McAvoy walks it down low. Drives the net. Shot in there. Saved by Allen. Rebound off the side of the net. DeBrusque takes it behind the net. Gets it to Marshawn. Out high now to Grizzlick. Grizzlick with it along the sideboards, trying to get by the D. Takes it down low, wraps it around, passes to the other side. Marshawn gets knocked down there at the blue line. Good hit from the Canadians. They can't get it out, though, on the first try. Second chance, now they do clear. Armia brings it up now into the offensive zone, throws it into the glove of Swayman, and he's going to cover that one up now with 14.09 to go in the second. There'll be an offensive zone faceoff coming up for Montreal. Yeah, definitely, Derek. They were able to dump off Braun, able to dump off Broussard. Like, those are guys that don't really, I mean, for a non-playoff team, are kind of pointless to just be there wasting away. So they get some draft picks in return, and you'll get to see some of the younger guys and what they can bring. I agree with you. I thought today was, was a decent day for them to dump off some veteran guys. Here's Suzuki now into the offensive zone. His shot gets blocked wide. Habs keep it in, though. Suzuki on the sideboards. Plays it to Caulfield. Caulfield trying to get it back to the point. Taken into the middle now. Poked away by Hall. And it's cleared up now to David Pasternak. Bruins in onto the attacking end. Hall are trying to cut to the middle. He's shielded away by Petrie. Taylor Hall knocks the clearing attempt down. Habs will have to try again. And it's backhanded up now to Caulfield through the neutral zone. Into the attacking end. 13 and a half to go here in the second period. Played down low to the corner. Working it up now. Taken behind the net. Carlo shields off Anderson, but Habs keep the puck. Out high now, Weidman. Not able to keep it in at the blue line. Here's Pasternak with it over the red line. And he's just going to bring it into the offensive zone and then fall down. He's got to get off for a line change here. Habs take it up ice. Throws that one wide of Swayman. Played now. Caulfield dumps it deep. Mike Riley takes it away from Hoffman. Up the boards it goes. Trying to get it by Pitlick there. And Clifton with it now. Behind the net for Riley. Backhanded up the boards again. Over to Nick Felino. Felino goes off glass and gets it out. Uh, Logan, that's a great question. The Islanders were a team that I really did not understand what they did today. Like, they, they did nothing. All they did was re-sign two old players in Clutterbuck and, and Parise. They didn't trade away anybody. They didn't get any sort of assets. No, like I was very surprised that the Islanders didn't really make any sort of move. And um, 
I don't know, I guess they're just hoping that this was just a bad year and that they'll be back on track next year with the same group, but I don't know, to me, to me, that might not have been the best way to go about it, but I, I mean, only time will tell. 12 minutes to go here in the second. Riley chases for Boston, will regroup in his own zone, trying to start the breakout. Both teams get fresh legs on the ice otherwise. Played up now to Craig Smith through the neutral zone. Dumps it for Coyle. Coyle going to be off sides, and he's just over the line. They give that one a whistle, and we're going to get a neutral zone faceoff when we come back. 1-0 Boston still on the first period goal from Brad Marchand, the only scoring we've had so far. And uh, we're going to head to our first commercial break now of period number two. Thank you guys again all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot if you can hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams, welcome and wanted here. Just trying to grow a community where everyone can come together, have some fun, and enjoy hockey. Just drop my upcoming, uh, my upcoming stream schedule in the chat again as well, so if you guys want to know what games I'll be doing this week, check that out. So uh, tomorrow night will be Columbus against Pittsburgh. Then a double header coming up on Wednesday. We've got the Devils against Maple Leafs and then Vancouver against Colorado after. And I am really, really interested in that Vancouver versus Colorado game. Uh, Canucks are trying to fight their way into a playoff spot, but uh, have a couple bad losses here over the last few weeks, and uh, that's hurting their chances. So... That's going to be a tough game against the top team in the league in Colorado, especially with all the new additions that Colorado made as well, uh, really adding to the depth of that team. So that's going to be an interesting game. And then obviously Tampa Bay against Boston on Thursday night. That is, that's a marquee game if, I, if you've ever seen one, especially after the trade deadline with the moves that's been made. Anyway, here we go. Coming back from the commercial break, getting ready to get back into the action. Face off one back by Montreal. They'll look to work it out of their zone. Up the boards to Pizzetta. Poked away from him. Now getting back is Byron to make the play. And possession back to Montreal. Byron carries it now through neutral ice. Over the red line and dumps it into the offensive end. Swayman comes out of the net. Plays that one behind. And it's stolen by Jake Evans. Chance now. Canadians have the puck in the attacking zone. A chance out high. Played here. Savard backhanded in there. And he scores! David Savard with a backhand top corner with 11-11 to go in the second period. And it is a 1-1 game as Montreal ties it up. <laughs> Big goal there for the Canadians defenseman jumping into the play, driving the net, and putting one home on the backhand. High blocker side on Swayman over the shoulder, and it is a 1-1 game here as the Canadians get themselves on the board. And we are all even again mid-second period. Aaron, what's going on? Welcome in. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. We've got 11-10 now to go in the second. Canadians have just tied it up, and they take the puck off of the faceoff. Dumped into the offensive zone. Played up the wall here by McAvoy. Bruins can't get it out. Canadians showing life here after that goal. Right back into the offensive end. Good forechecking pressure. Bruins kind of a little scrambly here. Druin takes that passing, sends it back deep. Armia hit along the wall. Played into the middle now. It's up and finally cleared by Boston. Here's Petrie with it. He goes D to D. Moved up the boards now. Chipped up. And the Canadians send it back into the Boston end. Studnika against Armia. Down in the corner. Mike Riley gets the puck as it squirts out of the 
uh, battle along the boards, and Boston will get a chance to clear. Moved up now. Dumped in. Bruins get a line change. Petrie starts the breakout for Montreal. Sends it up the wall all the way down. And that's going to be icing as Brandon Carlo just beating out the icing. Goes flying into the net. And Jeremy Swayman as he loses an edge trying to win that race. But he does get the icing call, and it will go back down to the other way, an ozone draw for the Bruins. So, 1-1 one, one game here. Marshawn scores for Boston back in the first period. David Savard ties it up for the Canadians here in the second. And it's going to be a pretty important third goal coming up. We'll see which team is able to get it. Face off now. One back by the Habs. They loft it up and out to the neutral zone. Grizzlick gets it back for Boston. Here's Postnock into the offensive end. Pass across for Hall. Hall fans on his shot attempt but keeps the puck. Trying to drive it through now. He gets pressured. Taken away by Suzuki. And up the boards and cleared out now by the Canadians. Anderson gets it deep into the offensive zone. Played here now, thrown through, knocked down by Grizzlick. Great defensive play, not letting the puck through. Bruins come back the other way, into the offensive zone. Here's Hall. His pass is offline for Halla, and the Habs are going to get an easy clear now from Weidman. And neutral zone, that's deflected up into the bench. We're going to get a quick whistle and a faceoff here. 9.27 to go in period two, 1-1 one, one game. We're headed to a commercial break. Just past the halfway point of this one. Boston and Montreal all knotted up. Pretty good game so far, though, for sure. Pretty good game. Back and forth. Some chances on both sides. A goal for each team. Solid overall, I think, pace to the play. It's not one of those games where we're getting, like, whistles every, like, 10, 15 seconds or anything like that. There's been good flow to the play and everything, so... We'll see this big second half of the game coming up. This is a game that if, if you're the Bruins, you can't afford to be throwing away points against, you know, bottom of the league teams like this. But they're certainly not going to make it easy on you either. You know, Montreal's played a lot better since the coaching change. Marty St. Louis got them playing with some, uh, with some effort and some attitude. And they're not going to make it easy on you despite not being a playoff team this year. Uh, Fire Aura, what's going on? Welcome in. Uh, if, if I knew who would win, Aaron, then I would be probably at the casino right now betting on the game and not here. Um, I, I mean, I picked the Bruins to win, but I don't know for sure. Um, but I, I wish I knew, I wish I knew who was going to win games before they happen. I'd be a very, very rich person if I did. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would want to be my best friend, 100% dork. Off the bet hockey, exactly, Vernon. <laughs> uh, there you go, Vernon, welcome in. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, it would. I, I think I'd change the, ch the channel name for sure. I This would be a gambling channel and I'd be getting 100% accuracy, it'd be insane. So we got a problem with something in the net here. Might be the camera. So ice crew trying to fix that as we get ready for puck drop out in the neutral zone.
Ready now to get back underway. Dauphin and Lazar on the faceoff. One back by Lazar. Bruins take possession. And that one's going to be iced by Boston as we get a whistle. 9.20 to go here in the second. Brad Marchand, Aaron. One back now. Canadians take the ozone draw. There's a shot block for Lazar. Bruins trying to get it out now. Kept in by Weidman. Habs working around in the offensive end. Played to the corner. Carlo gets it taken away by uh, Mike Hoffman. Felino with a hit now against Laurent Dauphin. Behind the net now. Worked up the boards. Played here. Chipped to the middle. And that one is up and out of the zone. Bruins going on the forecheck now, trying to get some offense of their own going. Felino and Nosek putting the pressure on the D. Habs looking to start the breakout. Felino gets shouldered away there by uh, Shuneman. And out of the zone now, Weidman up into the offensive zone. Dauphin cuts to the middle. Back check coming though from Boston. Marshawn gets it out to the red line. And Bruins bring it up into the offensive zone. Here's Jack, or no, Curtis Lazar still out there. Rims it behind the net. Gets it through to the corner for Jack Studnika. Back to the point. Long shot. And able to find it on the long shot from the point is Jake Allen. He'll cover that one up. And we'll get a whistle here and an ozone draw coming up for the Bruins. Still a 1-1 game. Yeah, Canadians had themselves a pretty good uh, trade deadline, getting solid returns for Ben Sherratt, Brett Kulak, and Arturi Lekkanen. Uh They added some some really solid pieces, uh, especially draft picks for for Montreal, which obviously as a rebuilding team, they they could never have enough draft picks. So I, I like what Montreal did and what they were able to get for the players that they did trade. Hey, Grego, what's going on? Welcome in. Great to see you here. Thank you so much for coming by. Really, really appreciate it. Got another stoppage with 7.58 to go in the second. Top line out on the ice for the Bruins, and they're going to line up for this neutral zone faceoff. DeBrusque, Marshawn, and Studnika. Down the middle in place of the injured Patrice Bergeron, although it does look like Bergeron could be back for Thursday's game against the Lightning, or at the very least will be back you know, pretty soon, even if it's not exactly Thursday. He should be back soon. Romanov now fights off the check from DeBrusque, then gets almost poked away there by Studnika, but it's back out to the neutral zone. Bruins have to regroup. Brought in now, Mike Riley jumping into the play. He can't get it deep, though. Getting some help, DeBrus gets to the puck, throws that one in short side, saved by Allen. McAvoy out at the blue line, can't keep in the bouncing puck. And now Montreal trying to take it back. Both teams kind of fumbling with the puck there. Eventually, Dvorak comes away with it. He gets taken down there by McAvoy. Chance out in front now. That one just poked wide. Long shot there. That's a chance. Swayman trying to find it in front. Eventually, DeBrus comes away with it. And that goes back out now. Bruins dump it in on Allen, and we'll get a much-needed line change. Under seven minutes to go in the second. Habs into, back in the offensive zone. Carlo plays the puck with Caulfield chasing. Pass into the middle. And almost turned over there by Coyle, but Mike Riley gets it right back. Into the attacking zone now. Boston throws that one in. That just goes wide. Played around now. Absolutely, Logan. Absolutely. Chance now. Ch in front! Smith tried to wrap around, but it rolled through the crease. Taken by Coyle. He spins off a check. Trying to make a play down low. Back now to the blue line. Into the middle. Carlo with a long shot. That one's knocked down in front. Canadians able to clear it back out to the neutral zone. Backhanded back up to Frederick. He throws it into the middle. Only Canadians there. Frederick uh, tries to steal it back, though, in the neutral zone. Here come the Habs as that one goes through his leg. Shot in there. Swayman with a save, and the rebound pops high over the net. And now we got a whistle, and it's going to be an interference call. 
And that's going to put Montreal on the power play here. Matt Grizzlick going to the penalty box for interference. And Montreal is going to get a chance a, on the power play here. 1-1 one, one game and Grizzlick's going to the penalty box. Six oh one to go in the second period. One one game and the Canadians are going to the power play. A chance to get their first lead of the game. Bruins win the defensive zone faceoff though, and they clear it all the way down early here on this PK. Habs have to regroup. Hoffman back out in the neutral zone. And they're not really able to get anything going. Cleared away again there by Boston. Thrown all the way back. Canadians, 30 seconds gone on this power play, and they haven't even had the puck in the offensive zone. Up over the red line, into the offensive end. Here's a chance now. Armia rushes it down the wing, back to the point. Canadians finally set up. Shot in there, chance deflected in front, high over the bar. 112 still to go on the power play here for Montreal. Hoffman with it on the sidewall, back out to the point. D to D play now, sent down low. Trying to go cross ice here, Hoffman misses the net. Had half the side of the net wide open, but he shoots it wide. Habs keep it in though, still working around the attacking zone. 50 seconds left on the power play. Cross ice pass again for Hoffman, thrown in front, rebound chance, just sent wide as well after Swayman made the first stop. Habs keep it in, now it's Dvorak to Hoffman. Hoffman, cross ice, pass gets deflected away by Nosek. Get, taking it down in the corner now, Pitlick gets it back to the point. Top of the circle, here's a chance saved by Swayman and he's going to cover it up with 20 seconds to go on the power play. And this game stays 1-1. One Ryan, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Good pressure here on the last minute or so for this power play for Montreal, but... So far, everything stays out, and that's cleared all the way down again by Boston. All the way behind Jake Allen, only 15 seconds to go on the power play. Moved up now through the middle, poked away. Into the offensive zone, Suzuki drops it for Anderson. Five seconds to go on the power play. Suzuki down low, has it poked away by Boston. Up, and they clear as we go back to five on five. Power play is over. And all even strength again as Boston now trying to get the cycle going in the offensive zone. Played up now through the middle into the offensive end. Here comes Josh Anderson. Throws that one in on Swayman who makes the easy pad stop. Up the wall now and cleared out by the Bruins. And that goes all the way down. It's going to be icing as it gets by Edmondson. 3.35 to go in the second. Dallas, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Uh, Dallas, there's a uh, Streamlabs link in the description that says Donos. Uh, that's, th that's the best way to do it. Uh, Popsicle Pete, what's going on? Welcome in. Uh, CAB, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Great to have you in the chat. Uh, Grizzlick had the penalty for Boston. Moved up now, trying to clear it out. Played here by Evans. Evans back to the point. Savard fires that one well wide. Evans gets it back on the half boards. Poked away from him, but moved back to Savard. Now top of the circle. Fires one in there on Swayman, who's kind of down and out, but lands on the puck and is able to cover that one up with 3-11. Remaining here in the second. It will be an offensive zone faceoff for Montreal when we come back. They've tied the game here in the third or second, 3-11 to go in period number two, and we are still knotted up at one. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you guys all so much for being here. 
Really, really appreciate it. It does mean a lot. Be awesome if you could hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams, welcome and wanted here. Just trying to grow a hockey community where everybody can come together, have some fun, and enjoy the game. It's been a fun, close game tonight, man. Mon Montreal looks a lot better. A lot better under um, Marty St. Louis. Like, just playing with a lot more effort, uh, a lot more drive and uh, purpose in their game under St. Louis. So he's gotten he's gotten a lot out of this team, and it's been fun to watch. Obviously, they didn't they haven't had the year that they were hoping to coming off a of finals appearance last year. But um, you know they they they've certainly brought the effort over these last few weeks with St. Louis as the coach. Hey, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate it. Uh, Cab as well, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Coming back from commercial break here. Hey, Sebastian, welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. It's great to have you here. Appreciate you watching. Uh, hey, new sub hype in the chat. Thank you so much, Cab. Really, really appreciate it. Awesome to awesome to have you as a subscriber now. Let's get that hype in the chat, everybody. Uh, Johan, welcome in. Uh, I hope so, but I don't know. I mean, if I knew the outcome of the game, I'd be betting a lot of money on it. I don't know who's going to win. It's a 1-1 game. Uh, Jace, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Cleared up the wall now. Boston into the offensive zone. Moved in now. That one goes off the boards. Bruins trying to steal it back. Canadians get it up through neutral ice. Into the offensive zone. Thrown down here. What's going on, Pete? Welcome. Uh, yeah, exactly, Rick. Like, he hasn't, he has no coaching experience, but I, respect is huge. Respect is huge um, when it comes to a coach, and the players absolutely respect Marty St. Louis. He was one of the most respected players when he played, and I think that you know he's kind of looked at as a legend now, as you know by the younger players. Even if they were too young to have played with him, he's kind of looked at as a legend. So um, I think that definitely helps with their response to him being the coach. Uh, big time, Kyle. There's no doubt about that. Big time. Um, we, we, I'd be making a lot of money if I knew the outcome of games beforehand. Uh, Ken, what's going on? Welcome in. Deport man, welcome on. Welcome in. What's going on? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Final minutes now of the second period. Still a 1-1 game. Shots are 25-23 in favor of Boston. Offensive zone faceoff, one back to the point. McAvoy, or no, that was Clifton, excuse me, with a shot. That gets blocked wide. Canadians take it. That gets taken back now. Mike Riley over the red line. Into the offensive zone. Canadians seal it at the blue line and send it right back out. Moved across now. Behind the net. Played down to Pitlick. Rem Pitlick throws it in front. And that one's stolen by the Bruins. Jake DeBrus carries it out into the offensive zone for Marshawn. Marshawn now pass for Riley. Shot in there. Allen with the save holding the post. And Jake Allen will cover that one up with 131 to go in the second. Will be another attacking zone faceoff for the Bruins. So Boston with another chance here if they can win this faceoff in the offensive zone. Brian, what is going on, man? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you in the chat. Kind of a board battle for this puck. It's sent deep now by Bruins. No sick and Lazar get in there. Felino gets in there. Habs trying to clear up the wall and out. 
Oh, wow. Really, Jace? Uh, wishing you wishing you all the best, man. Hopefully you stay safe and uh, everything turns out okay. Taken now by Grizzlick up into the middle of the ice. Gets it through to Nosek. That was a little dangerous, but he gets it, uh, gets it through. And now Boston trying to steal it behind the net away from Allen. 50 seconds to go now in the second as the Canadians clear it out. Played into the offensive end. Down in the corner. We got a penalty call coming up now against Montreal. And with 40 seconds to go in the second period, it's going to be a, another power play here for Boston, who's 0 for 2 on the advantage so far. And this is late in the second. It will carry over into the third if the Bruins don't score before the end of the period. It is uh, Romanov going to the penalty box. Alexander Romanov for tripping. So Boston here on the power play. See what this top unit can do with 40 seconds left in the period. One back by Coyle. They'll set up in the attacking zone. Poshnok plays it over to Marshawn. Down low. Played in front here. There's a shot attempt that gets blocked wide. Bruins get it back though. It's Coyle to Pasta to Marshawn. Marshawn back to Poshnok out high. To Marshy with a shot. Save or block there. It never gets all the way through and is sent all the way down. Behind the net now, 15 seconds left to go in the period. Pasta with some speed through the neutral zone. Into the offensive end. Drops it off. Chance for a pass here. Shot from Marshawn and a save by Allen. Final seconds now. Bruins going to have to get one final shot. Off. Allen with the glove at the horn. As the period comes to an end. Jake Allen with a couple of big saves there. And it keeps this game tied. And that is the end of period number two. Power play, a minute and 20 of power play time will carry over for Boston into, into the third period here. But Jake Allen not allowing them to score before the intermission. And what a glove stop there. Robbing Brad Marchand of his second goal of the game. And that is the end of two. We've got 40 minutes down, 20 minutes of action to go. Bruins will still have a minute 20 of power play time to start the third period. But it is all tied up heading into the final frame. Thank you guys again all so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. Love having you all in the chat. Don't forget, like, and subscribe. I cover the entire NHL. So fans of every team, welcome and wanted here. We're going to have some time now to hang out and chill in the chat while we wait for period number three to begin. But before we get there, i got to tell you guys about uh, Score Check, which is uh, made by a subscriber to the channel and somebody who uh, trying to help grow uh, his uh, Google Chrome product, which is completely free. So rather than me just talking about it over and over, I'm going to run a quick little piece about score check right now, and then we can talk uh, when, when I get, uh, as soon as this is over in just about a minute. So uh, again, appreciate all the support, guys. And here's a quick word from one of our channel sponsors. Hey, everybody. I'm here to talk to you today about ScoreCheck, which is a completely free Google Chrome extension that allows you to look at NHL scores and standings at any time without leaving your current web page. ScoreCheck was created by channel subscriber Scott, who's in the chat is Smack OG, and Scott is the same software developer who created my automatically updating score ticker that I now use during streams. I'm trying to help Scott get some more users of his score check extension. So if this is something that you guys might be interested in, please check out the link in the description. Again, it's completely free to use. Just takes you to where you can add it to your Google Chrome. And I use it myself. You can look at scores for, and schedule for today. You can look at scores from yesterday. You can look at the schedule for tomorrow in the NHL. And you can also look at the standings both by division and by wildcard standings and where the 
playoff cut line is right then in the NHL. So it's a really cool product. It's a really awesome Google Chrome extension that makes it really, really easy to check NHL scores and standings. Again, obviously, if you're watching this, you're probably a hockey fan. Please check out the link down in the description. If you use Google Chrome, it'll definitely help make your life easier. Thanks, guys. And now back to the regular video. All right, we are back to our regularly scheduled program here. And we've got a second intermission while we wait for this third period to begin. Isaiah, what's going on? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Inter intermission, power play to start the period for the Bruin. Abbreviated power play to start the period. It's all going to come down to who wins the final 20 minutes. Um... No, Boston won the first period. Montreal won the second period. It's all going to come down to who wins the third. And that team's going to be walking out of here with two points tonight. And the other team's going to be going home uh, probably pretty disappointed losing a game that was definitely a winnable one heading into the final frame. Uh, Isaac thinks one of the Charlies is going to score for the Bruins. So either McAvoy or Coyle. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, and Charlie Coyle's line, which has been really on fire recently, has been a little bit quiet in this game. The Coyle-Frederick-Smith line's been a little bit on the quiet side in this game, so I would not be surprised if we got a big third period from them, because they've been playing really, really well recently. Uh, Norm, Boston didn't really do anything today. All they did was bring in a depth defenseman, um, Josh Brown from Ottawa, who's pretty much like a number seven, number eight type guy. Um, just, uh, just added some defensive depth. Um, but Boston's big move was Hampus Lindholm this past weekend back on Saturday. Uh, L Lindholm was the big move for Boston, and I like it a lot. I think he's a very good player and makes the makes the Bruins' defense a lot deeper and a lot better. So I was happy about it. I, I kind of wish that they had – I wanted them to try and bring in another forward, but looking at the prices that the forwards ended up going for, uh, it really wasn't – I'm, I'm almost looking back now kind of glad that they didn't pay the price – for a Ricard Raquel or an Andrew Kopp or somebody like that because those guys fetch pretty big returns. So I'm happy with Lindholm coming to Boston and it's just going to be a it's just going to be a, a wait and see type thing now f see how far they can go in the playoffs. John, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Aaron thinks that Smith will get a goal. Yeah, I mean, some, I feel like somebody from that line, whether it's Frederick Coyle or Smith, somebody from that line is uh, hopefully going to get one here in the third. All right, sounds good, Matthew. Thank you so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. It's been great to have you uh, in the chat and watching and a part of the stream. And uh, we'll definitely talk to you next time. So thank you so much and have a great night. Have a great uh, day at work as well tomorrow. Uh, yeah, has been a goalie battle, Isaac. Both teams have got 25-plus shots on goal. Boston has 29. Montreal has 25. It's not like there's a lack of shooting in this game. Just the goalies have played very well. Goalies have played very well.
Uh, oh, de definitely, Brian. The cap hit especially. Very cap, very happy with a cap hit under seven for for Lindholm. So, uh, the the eight years is a little long, but I'll take I'll take it being two years a little long to get the cap hit down to six point five. So, uh, again, as a Bruins fan, I'm also not really worried about seven eight years. I'm trying to trying to ha be as competitive as possible while we still have Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand. So, uh, I I'm. Definitely happy, definitely happy with the uh, with the way that it improves the team right now and for the foreseeable future. If he ends, you know, if maybe at the end, year seven and year eight aren't very good, but that's not really a concern for of mine right now. Um, I I'm happy that they made their blue line better, and I'm glad that he's not just a rental, especially given uh, given how much they gave up for him. But to get him at 6.5 million, I am very happy with that. Uh, Black Series Features, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Good to see you in the chat. All right, you think it's going to be 2-1 Boston? That would be only one more goal the rest of the game. Get get your bets in on the under, I guess. If you're going off of off of that prediction, then it's gonna be two one Boston, then get your bets in on the under. There you're right, there are a lot of ones and twos in the stats here. Twenty first day of March. Seven two and one in their last ten, plus twenty one goal differential. All right. Got some uh, some mathematical circumstances here for this to be a two one game. Aaron thinks it's gonna be four one. Well, it's it's definitely not scripted. I played played sports for way too long. It's there. It's literally impossible to script sports. Um, so that's just wrong, but okay. I mean, you can, you can think what you want, but that's just wrong. Clem, what's going on? Welcome in. Clem says 3-2 Boston. Uh, yeah, no, see, I, I, if, if you're a team that's in a contending position now, I mean, you're not really worried about year seven, six, seven, eight of those deals. It's about doing what you can to be the best team that you can be now. And, um, Yeah, I, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with the eight years as long as the Bruins are, as long as the first four or five years of that contract are really good, then you you know that that's the 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 what's the word? That's the exchange that you make for having it also be year six, seven, and eight. Like you know, as long as you get a good first five years out of it, I'll take the bad end of the contract. Uh, I mean, that, it doesn't have to be scripted for that fan, for that Stanley Cup final to even happen. Those, that's like a very realistic potential final, especially if Colorado craps out early, like they have the past couple of years, that would really open the Western conference up. Florida has been one of the best teams in the league all year. That's a very realistic Stanley Cup final. Hey, love all. What's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Great to have you in the chat. I've been saying a Colorado versus Carolina final, but there's certainly no guarantee of that happening. 
it's going to be so competitive that, you know, you're not, you're just making random guesses basically as to who makes it. Like, there's no way of really knowing. It's going to be so wide open, especially the East is nuts. The East is absolutely nuts. I think the West is a little bit more, you know, you've got Colorado, Carolina, or Ca Ca Calgary. You've got Colorado and Calgary kind of as your top two. And then after that, I think there's a bit of a drop off before you get to like the St. Louis's and Minnesota's and Nashville's and teams like that. But you never know. A team could get hot and go on a run. Look at what Dallas did in 2020. I know the circumstances of the 2020 playoffs were quite different, but Dallas was not a team that many that many people thought was going to be able to go deep into that postseason. Like nobody was really expecting much from Dallas in that year, and then all of a sudden, boom! You know they're in the finals. It's definitely you know we see runs like that. It's definitely possible. Uh, yeah, I think everybody in the East has a chance. I think everybody in the in the East has a chance to go on a run, Clem. I mean, I, I can't count any of those teams out other than maybe... I don't think Washington's going to get beyond round one or two just because of their goaltending, but I don't know. They, they still got a good enough roster to make things interesting. And then the top of the East, I mean, God, Pittsburgh's really good. Carolina's really good. Tampa's really good. Florida's really good. Toronto's really good. Like... The top of the East is nuts. Uh, Grady, what's going on? Welcome in. F uh, Floyd, what's going on? Welcome in. Mark, welcome in. Thank you guys all for being here. Really appreciate it. We're getting ready for third period action here. It's a 1-1 one -one game heading into the final 20. Boston will have an abbreviated power play on a carryover penalty from the second. And uh, we'll see which team's able to... Come away with the two points here. This is a big third period coming up. It's overall been a pretty fun game tonight. Yeah, Norm. There are there are a lot of good teams this year. A lot of a lot of like pretty on the a lot of teams that are kind of on the same level. You know, I I don't think there's any like juggernaut team like oh my god, this team's unbeatable. I think Colorado might be the closest to that, but there's no really unbeatable team this year. But there's a lot of teams that are all really closely matched and it's going to make the playoffs a lot of fun. Uh yeah, Habs, Habs have done a great job, Mark, at the deadline. I mean, the, the players that they were able to sell off and get really good returns on uh, was really good to see. You know, um, Chirac returned him a first-round pick. Um, they got Justin Barron from Colorado as, as well as a draft pick in the Arturi Lekkinen deal. Kulak brought back a pretty decent return for bottom-pair D-man. Canadians are set up to, to rebuild very well. Kellen, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, minute 20 on the power play, Clem. Yeah, one minute and 20 seconds. Good to see you, Kellen. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Awesome to have you in the chat. We're getting ready for the third period action here. Still a little ways to go. Yeah, Kellen, it's been a very, very fun game. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Starting the third. Whoops. 
Back from commercial break and start in the third period. 20 minutes of hockey to determine this one. Oh, it 100% is an arms race, Brian. 100%. Boston made the Lindholm deal. Uh, Toronto made the Giordano deal. Um, Florida added Sherratt and Giroux. Tampa Bay added Hagel and Paul. It's absolutely an arms race. Yes, Mark, 100%. East is absolutely loaded this year. Definitely stronger than the West. Uh, completely up for grabs, Clem. I mean, look at the standings and look at how few points are separating those top four teams in the Atlantic. They're all stacked on top of each other. It, it could finish in like almost any order. I mean, it's completely up for grabs. Um... I I was kind of surprised, Mark, at that Hamannick deal. Uh, I'm not really sure why that deal happened, or at least it like I felt like that'd be something for like maybe after the season, like an off season move. Uh, that that was one of the deals that just I was kind of unsure as to even why it happened. I mean, why is Ottawa buying a veteran defenseman when they're in the middle of a rebuild like this? Like, I'm not entirely sure, but felt like that probably could have been an offseason move, but it is what it is. As we are underway here, Bruins into the offensive zone. Third period action. Donovan, what's going on? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Olivia, welcome in. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. That's cleared all the way down. 30 seconds of power play time left for the Bruins. Trying to take advantage of this opportunity into the offensive zone coil. Played back now. That's stolen away. Here's a chance shorthanded for the Canadians. 2-1. Oh, and they score. Joel Armia puts it home shorthanded, and it is 2-1 Montreal. Brutal turnover at the blue line by Boston. And that is the worst start to the period that you could possibly have if you're the Boston Bruins. Absolutely horrific turnover at the blue line by Brad Marchand. And Joel Armia just walks in on a breakaway all alone. Absolutely nobody near him. And that is absolutely pathetic there from the Bruins. And now they find themselves losing this game. Yeah, so uh, Black Series, you you're uh, you're wrong on the score there. Certainly not two to one Boston. So you're already wrong about stuff. You'll probably be wrong about the finals too. And that is absolutely pathetic there from Boston. F power play comes to an end. We're finally back to five on five. Down in the corner. Bruins got to get on the board here. So that one's cleared up and sent all the way back out again by Montreal. Water King, what's going on? Real deal, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, the only thing the Capitals did was bring back Marcus Johansson. That was the only move that Washington did today. Moved up now into the offensive zone. Here's another chance off the post. What an opportunity for Montreal, but it goes off the post. 
and it stays 2-1. As that's brought up now by the Bruins. Played now here. Canadians up through the neutral zone. Dumped into the offensive end. That's going to be icing. That came from well behind the red line. And icing call there against Montreal. 17-23 to go in the third. And Boston now finds themselves needing a goal. Uh, one of the subscribers to the channel, Water King, who's a software engineer, created an automatically updating ticker. One back now, played out high. Long shot there. That one gets knocked down. And back the other way now. Dauphin ducks around a hit. Now Nosek pins him to the boards, but Hoffman plays it down low. Trying to take it up the wall here. Romanov keeps it in. That one goes off a body. Lazar can't get it out. Romanov keeps it in again. Uh, Senor Conqu Conquistador, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Hey, hopefully you get to see a fun game. That should be a good one. Bruins and Canadians. Played over now. Carter, what's going on? Welcome in. Fourth line out now for Boston. Playing it in the offensive zone. Trying to dig along the boards for it. Taken though by Hoffman. Canadians clear it out. And that one gets an icing again here against Montreal. 16.30 to go in the third. Uh, Stewart, good moves, uh, definitely bolsters the Rangers forward depth by quite a bit, and that's what they needed going into the playoffs. Uh, if you think Boston is a very bad team, Robin, then I'm just going to assume that you don't follow the NHL at all, because that is just completely false and incredibly stupid to say. So I'm just going to assume that you don't know anything about hockey. As it's brought up now by Pitlick into the offensive zone. Uh, definitely not, Water King. Uh, what are your feelings on Cole Caulfield? He's going to be a very good scorer. He's going to be a very good scorer. I don't know if he's ever going to be like a 50-goal guy. He's probably not going to be a Rocket Richard type guy. But I do think he's going to be a guy that can consistently score 30 goals every year. Moved in the other way now. Played in here. Shot up high. Taken now by Coyle. Trying to move it into the middle. Thrown in now and dumped into the offensive end. Trying to clear it out. Carlo now backhanded up the wall. Dumped into the offensive zone. That one gets played across here to Carlo. Dumped into the offensive end. Played down low here, wrapped around the boards. Uh, I certainly hope so, Brian. I think Montreal would be nuts not to bring back St. Louis for next year. I mean, look at how much better the teams played under him. I feel like you got to at least give him a shot at a full season. The team's drastically improved since he's become the coach. So I feel like you've got to at least give him a full full year and see just how much he can truly get out of this team. Bruins carry it up now into the offensive zone. Taylor Hall gets hit by Romanov but keeps on plugging. Throws out and towards the net. It ends up behind. Back the other way now. Into the offensive zone. Here's Josh Anderson working around. Good job by Riley to slow him up. Up the boards now. Good collision there. Avatar, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. 
Long shot there gets knocked down. Spin around chance. Goes wide. Here's Caulfield chasing after it. Clifton in the corner against Anderson. Puck ends up on the near side. Bruins with a chance to get it out. Played up now. Riley through the neutral zone. Over the red line. Into the offensive zone. Chance in front here for Nosek. Drop pass. McAvoy with a shot that's blocked. Yeah, goaltending is going to be a problem, I think, in the playoffs for the Leafs. And I also see them with another first-round exit as well. 13-13 to go here in the third. Montreal 2-1 over Boston. Bruins have got to get another goal here. An awful giveaway by Brad Marchand. Right now is the difference in the game. And we head to our first commercial break of period number three. And Montreal right now holds the one-goal lead. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Great to have you all in the chat. Mean a lot if you could hit that thumbs up and uh, subscribe button if you haven't. I cover the entire NHL. Fans uh, fans of all teams, welcome and wanted here. Just trying to grow a community where everybody can come together, have some fun, and enjoy some hockey. Montreal trying to steal this game over Boston. Third period action. Still got uh, just over 13 minutes to go, however. So uh, we've got quite an interesting third period coming up here. The rest of the third period. Dropping my stream schedule coming up in the chat. Um, Montreal trying to steal this game here in the third. They got to hold on for another 13 minutes. Well, it'll, I mean, Toronto will be really, really happy if they uh, finally get out of round one. I just, I just, I mean, they didn't really add much at the deadline. Only Giordano is really the only significant in addition. And I don't know, Florida and Tampa both made massive moves. Uh, Rye Guy, thank you so much for subscribing. Let's get that hype in the chat for our new subscriber, Rye Guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 66, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Chance along the sideboards now. Save there by Montreal. Or not, uh, save on Montreal by Swayman. Bruins get it out. Uh, I am very, very happy with the Lindholm deal. Very, very happy. Dude's a excellent defenseman to go along with McAvoy and Carlo. And a fantastic piece for the future. Boston's D is better than Toronto's D. And that's what I'm happy about. Offensive zone faceoff here. Halla in to take it. 12.40 to go in the third. Boston's D is 100% better than Toronto's. Like, that's not even a question. Taken now by Hall. Moved into the middle. Pasternak keeps it in. Back out to the point. And turned over again here by Boston. Two on one now into the offensive zone. Here's another chance. And a big save there by Swayman getting a pad on it. Bruins trying to come back the other way, but Pasternak gets hit down. Twelve minutes to go here in the third. Played up now, taken here. No, he isn't. Not even close. McAvoy's a top ten defenseman in the entire NHL. Not even close. Riley's not even good defensively. I mean, I like Riley, but he is not better than McAvoy. 
McAvoy is right up there with the best young D-men in the entire league. He's a top 10 defenseman in the league. Lindholm's not playing tonight, Brian, though, but he should be there Thursday against Tampa as that gets dumped into the offensive zone. 11.15 to go here. Played over now. Edmondson passes it up. Played through now. Brought up into the offensive zone. Ekblad is absolutely a top 10 defenseman, Axie. Ekblad, I mean, he got hurt again, which sucks. Because if he didn't get hurt, Ekblad should be in the Norris conversation. Aaron Ekblad is absolutely a top 10 defenseman, without a doubt. Brought in now. Uh, I think the Eastern Conference Finals probably going to be Carolina against Florida. But it very well could be Carolina against Tampa Bay as well. Uh, I think whoever, uh, I think Tampa Bay and Florida are both like just, I, I picking between those two, they're so incredibly evenly matched. They play the game's different style, but they're incredibly evenly matched. And Florida's a lot better this year than they were last year. I think whoever comes out between Tampa Bay and Florida will be a team that's likely going to the finals, or Carolina also has a pretty good shot at the finals. They've been unbelievable this year. Uh, Hedman's a top 5D, Peter. He Hedman is a top 5D. Shot in here, another save there by Allen, but we're going to get a whistle and a delayed penalty call. It's a hook. Boston's going to go to the power play here. St. Louis doesn't like the call. We'll get another look at it here. It looks like Caulfield's going to the penalty box. Boston is going to have an opportunity on the power play again here, although they've done nothing with their power plays so far. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for subscribing. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, given the way that the regular season has gone, Water King, I would say Carolina would be the toughest team for the Bruins to face because they've gotten destroyed by Carolina this year. Um, so I do not want to play them. That would probably be a, close to a sweep for the Hurricanes. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for subscribing. Really, really appreciate it. Everybody, let's get some hype in the chat for Scott, newest subscriber to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. DeBrusque playing it. Moved over now. Bruins set up in the offensive zone. Shot in there. Shot's blocked. Up and out of play, and we'll get a whistle. Uh, Avalanche did a very good job of, of depth, Avatar. I mean, they didn't need to add stars. They already had tons of star power there. They went out, and they made their depth better. They got better on D. They got better up front. Avalanche, to me, are probably the top favorite going into the playoffs. Moved over now. Played back to the point. Grizzlick with it. Setting up with a minute and a half to go. Smith with a shot that's blocked by Romanov. He's down. Chance on the back door. Allen gets across and makes the save. Sanika rims it around. Romanov still down on the ice. Trying to get back up. Here's Grizzlick. Over now. Here's Holla with a long shot. Allen through traffic. Makes the save and covers that one up. And now we got a little shoving after the whistle. I haven't seen any of this since the first period. What are you talking about? Dude, Lindholm, McAvoy, Carlo, Grizzlick is a fantastic top four. Forber on the bottom pair is, f is a great bottom pair, D-man. Watch some other teams other than the Leafs. My God. That's a fantastic decor. Lindholm's a massive addition. Top two guy. Probably going to play with McAvoy. Or you can play him with Carlo. And that becomes one of the best second pairs in the league. Boston's D is now fantastic. Long shot here from Pasternak. He rings the pipe. So close there. Played across now. 
Taken by Hall. Backdoor chance. Marshawn can't tuck it by the pad. Back to the point now. That one goes off escape. Pasta's got to get back. Backing that one through into the middle. Poked away by Swayman. 40 seconds to go in power for the time. Pasta right back up into the offensive zone. Chance here now for Hall. Pass out high. Slot shot blocked. Good good penalty killing here from uh, from Montreal. Just getting in the way. Getting in the way of everything. Moved back the other way now. Another shorthanded chance. Cross now there. Saved by Swayman. Man, chance in front. Only 10 seconds to go. Boston's power play is brutal without Bergeron. Holy cow. They're usually one of the top power plays in the league. But as soon as Bergeron goes. They look discombobulated. Killed off again. And another penalty kill there for Montreal. 7.50 now to go in the third. Back down there. That one played behind the net. And Bruins will get a line change. Here's Montreal trying to clear. Carter, thank you so much for subscribing. Let's get some sub hype in the chat for Carter, new subscriber to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, honestly, the most... The mo biggest surprise, I guess, for me was DeBrusque not getting moved, but um, I don't know. There wasn't anything that jumped out as a massive surprise to me. Maybe Domi to the Hurricanes because Carolina, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think, um, Do Domi doesn't generally fit what Car the type of player that Carolina generally brings in, so maybe that was a little surprising, but... I definitely think that they wanted to they wanted to uh, add somebody into the offensive zone now. Here comes Coyle trying to drive it in. Shot on Allen. He makes a save. And he'll cover that one up here with 640 to go in the third. Uh, I can believe it, Jam. It's the NHL. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night. That's hockey for you. Uh, best power play is Toronto, I believe, if they're still at 30% like they were last time I looked. Ryan, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, Habs have played well tonight. I mean, this is, this is a totally different Habs team with St. Louis as the coach. They've, they're playing so much better than they did in the first part of the season before the coaching change. Uh, so much so much better effort level from, from Montreal. Their effort level in the first uh, few Canadians games against Boston was absolutely horrendous. Like they didn't even want to be there. Now they're actually now they're actually playing like they want to play and are trying to win and have have an attitude and are competitive. Uh, it, Jem, it's the NHL. That's not how it works. Teams lose games like this all the time. Uh, yeah, Domi's played for Arizona, Montreal, Columbus, and now Carolina. He just, he doesn't really fit the bill for what Carolina generally has on their roster, but... I think they wanted to add some grit for the postseason because they're not exactly the toughest team. They're not exactly the toughest team. Uh, Jamie, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Jake Allen, man, is having an unreal night. He's made some ridiculous saves in goal for the Canadians, especially the last few chances here in this third period. I mean, he's got 38 saves in the game. You talk about a goaltender stealing a game, that's what Jake Allen's doing. I mean, this guy has 38 saves already. Goaltender is stealing the game. As this one goes down in the corner. Trying to send it here. Breadsticks, thank you so much for subscribing. Really, really appreciate it. 
Let's get some sub hype in the chat and welcome Breadsticks to the channel. Uh, Wild are a dangerous team in the West now, Ryan. With Flurry solidifying their goaltending, because he's a big upgrade over Cam Talbot, the Wild become very, very dangerous in the West. 6.05 to go here in the third. Bruins pouring on shots, but Jake Allen is stopping everything tonight. Bruins, it's not even like Boston's played bad in this game. The only difference in the game is that horrible turnover from Marshawn that gave the Habs their second goal. Other than that, this has been, I mean, Boston's played well. It's just Jake Allen is stealing this game. Back through the neutral zone. Habs trying to bring it into the offensive end. Bruins get possession back. Here's Marshawn up to DeBrusque into the offensive zone. Cuts to the middle. Shot just sent wide. Played around now. That one gets checked. And looks like DeBrusque might be a little shaken up there. He goes to the bench. Bruins try and bring it back into the offensive zone. Here's a chance. Fired in. Allen makes another save. 519 to go in the third. Bruins now have 40 shots on goal, but they've only gotten one by Jake Allen. And we're going to go to the final commercial break of the third period. It's I, I mean, this is the best I've seen Jake Allen play in a long time. I mean, he is, he is playing like... Exactly, Jem. He's playing like an all-star. Absolutely playing like an all-star tonight. So we go to our final commercial break here of the third period. Montreal holding on to this 2-1 lead. And Jake Allen with an A-plus performance in goal tonight for the Canadians. Uh, shots... Are, I know uh, Boston just got their 40th. Um, Montreal, I believe, has, yeah, 29 for Montreal. So. Hey, welcome back, Michelle. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, I mean... They're only one shot away, Water King. They're only one shot away, but I don't know. Allen's going to be tough to beat. He is playing. He is playing absolutely unreal tonight. Especially, I mean, Boston's had a bunch of chances in this third period, and he stopped them all. Bruins and Leafs play next week. They got the Islanders this weekend. They play the Leafs next week. Then they get the Devils and Blue Jackets as well. So those are games that they should certainly be winning. Uh, the Devils and Blue Jackets ones, at least. I mean, obviously, the Leafs game is definitely going to be a tough one. The Tampa Bay game coming up Thursday is definitely going to be a tough one as the Canadians ice the puck right off of the faceoff. 5-11 to go here in the third. Uh, I mean, I think at this point, if you're Boston, you just got to throw everything possible on net. Hope that you get a deflection. Um, hope that you get a deflection or a you know, rebound chance in front. That one gets taken there, cleared back, Clifton back after it. I'm going to be interested to see who comes out of the lineup when Lindholm plays on uh, on Thursday. I assume it's probably going to be Clifton, but you know somebody's coming out of the lineup to make room for Lindholm. Oh, really? Uh, MLW? That's interesting. So Sherratt just stayed in Montreal then and is waiting for the Panthers to arrive. Bruins take it now, able to get it away, up the wall. Druin keeps it in. Bruins still back defensively, trying to work it out. Played back to Druin. Clifton out there, plays him down low, takes the puck away. 
And will, is able to pass it up the wing and get the puck out of the zone. Bruins will chase after it now. Here comes Marshawn against Romanov. Good to see Romanov all good after blocking that shot. He was in pain for a while, but he's back out there now. Final four minutes of the third period. Bruins trying to get it into the offensive zone. Played here by DeBrusque. Off for Studnika. Into the attacking end. Studnika goes across now. Carlo plays it to Grizzlick. Grizzlick sends it into the middle. Doesn't get through to DeBrusque. Taken now. And the Habs will clear it out. Yeah, Bruins have done fairly well against Tampa this year, Isaac. Set definitely a little bit different than the two years prior. Um, so we'll have to see what happens Thursday night. That's going to be a fun game. That's going to be a really fun game. Both teams should have all their trade deadline additions in the lineup by then. 3-10 now to go here in the third. Bruins in crunch time. They're running out of time to try and tie this game. They have been shut down offensively. Taken now by Craig Smith. Throws it in front. He has a chance and they score! Connor Clifton jumps into the play and ties the game at two as the Bruins finally beat Allen in the third. And with just under three minutes to go, it's a tie game. <laughs> And Connor Clifton ties the game for Boston with three minutes to go. And it is 2-2 as the Bruins even it up. And what a great pass there from Craig Smith. Gets it across to Clifton. And Clifton puts it home. 2-2 game now with three minutes left. Taken back now. Played here by Montreal. Trying to work it up here. Into the middle. Played by McAvoy. Turns it away. Gets around. Riley. Riley gets in his way. Luckily, no six able to muscle the puck out to the neutral zone. Taken now and dumped back in by the Canadians. Swayman will come out of the net. Play it to Riley. Riley takes a hit. No six trying to work it up the boards. Can't get it by. Here's Paul Byron. Here's Hoffman to the blue line. That pops up, comes out. Bruins take it. Here's Lazar into the offensive zone with Felino, And Felino's shot gets gloved there by Allen. He's got to cover it up. 2-12 to go here in the third. Bruins will have an offensive zone faceoff. Hey, this has been an awesome game. This has been a great hockey game between these two. A lot of fun. See who can pull it out at the end here. Uh, so more, he's, so Brian, he's probably going to give you about the same offensive output as Matthew Joseph, but he's more physical. He's a bigger body. Um, not, not as fast, but more of a playoff style, big physical player. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think he fits the lightning style of play pretty well, especially for playoff hockey. As that one gets up there, Allen's got to make another save on the point shot. 2.08 to go here, third period. Bruins trying to put this one away in regulation if they can score again. Although we're only two minutes away from overtime, so we could be seeing a little, uh, a little extra five minutes here. As Hollow wins that one back, shot off the draw. Allen's got to make another quick save. Bruins firing every puck that they can at the net, trying to get it by Jake Allen. 2.06 left in the third. And taken now. Pasternak along the sideboards. Poked away from him. Canadians get it out. Uh, Naswa, what's going on? Welcome in. Thanks for being here. Good to see you in the chat. Thanks for coming by. Up the wall now. Bruins clear the zone. Back out to neutral ice. Brought in now. Romanov takes it deep. Tries to get around Carlo. Switches off with Grizzlick to the other side. Out high. Here's Armias. Just sends it down low. Minute and a half to go here in the third. 
Cycle game going here for the Canadians in the offensive zone. Grizzlick steals it away, though. Matt Grizzlick, what a great defensive play, and then passes it up and out. To the red line, Bruins dump it, and they're going to be able to get a line change as the Canadians chase back to the defensive zone. This has been a really good, tight game tonight. One minute remaining in the third period. The Canadians have the puck. Joel Edmondson with a pass up through the neutral zone. Into the offensive end. Forbert chases. Plays it to McAvoy as he takes a hit. McAvoy passes it up and out of the zone. Marshawn pass to uh, DeBrusque. Into the offensive end. He fires one wide. Kept in now by McAvoy. Bruins in the attacking end. On the forecheck. Here's Coyle into the middle for Marshawn. Marshawn spin around. That one's blocked. 35 seconds to go. Knocked down there. Habs can't clear. Second chance they do get it out. DeBrus couldn't keep that one in. Playing it around now. Here's Derek Forbert. Taken up now. Pass through the middle to Trent Frederick. McAvoy tied up with uh, Jake Evans. Back behind the play here. They're going to whistle things down with 14 seconds to go in the third. And McAvoy and, and Evans just never let go of each other. Back behind the play there. They were all locked up. TCB, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. So they're putting it back to 17 seconds left on the clock. James, welcome in. Really appreciate it. Who else? If anyone news come in, my apologies if I haven't said hello. And we're going to get matching penalties here to Evans and McAvoy. That's actually a win for Montreal. Montreal gets a fourth line center off the ice. And Boston gets their number one defenseman in the penalty box. So that is actually a big win there for Montreal. We got 17 seconds to go in the third. And we might be going to OT here. We'll see. Jesse, what's going on? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. This is going to be a neutral zone face-off. It's going to be four on four. Suzuki to take the draw against Coyle. And I'm not sure what the holdup is here. Looks like they're... Referees are still discussing something, but now it looks like we're good to go. Four on four for two minutes. 17 seconds left. This one probably going to OT. One back, though, by the Bruins. They get possession. Bringing it up now, here's Eric Halla. Pass back to the D. It's Grizzlick over to Carlo. Carlo over the red line, into the offensive zone. Blast one in there, pad save Allen. Cleared out by Montreal, and we're going to overtime. Out to the neutral zone, horn sounds. We are going to OT, everybody. So, what a hockey game here tonight. What a hockey game. Bruins and Canadians back and forth. Boston scores first. Canadians come back with two goals, take a 2-1 lead. Bruins tie the game late here in the third, and we are going to OT 2-2. Two to two. Great goaltending, particularly from Jake Allen, who's had an incredible night for Montreal in net. Almost uh, was able to steal a regulation win for the Canadians, but uh, he's got over 40 saves in this one, and we'll see if they can still steal the second point here in overtime. So this is going to be fun. Pablo, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. This has been an awesome, awesome game tonight. Uh, Alexander, what's going on? Welcome in. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it is classic Bruins and Canadians rivalry for sure. But I think the biggest rivalry in the NHL right now is between Kyle Dubas and Kyle Davidson. <laughs> the, the GMs for the Chicago Blackhawks and Toronto Maple Leafs, they, they were jabbing at each other uh, in the media today. That was pretty funny. You don't see GMs doing that very often. 
But uh, it was definitely entertaining as they uh, had some words back and forth. But anyway, we're getting ready for the overtime here. McAvoy and Evans are still in the box. So that will carry over here into the OT. And uh, we'll see what seems able to get point number two. Uh, yes, Pablo, I did a whole video on it earlier when it happened. Uh, hey, thank you, MLW. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, WrestleMania event with the two Kyles. <laughs> Absolutely. Kyle Beef. <laughs> but anyway, guys, we're getting ready to drop the puck here. Now, I believe because the penalties carry over. Oh, no, it does start. All right, so it will be three on three, and they won't be able to get out of the box until there's a whistle. So we are three on three here as usual to start overtime. And Montreal is going to come away with possession here to start OT. So we'll see if they can maintain possession. And bring that one up through the neutral zone. Into the offensive end. Here's Caulfield looking for a wraparound play. Passes it back down low for Suzuki. Suzuki trying to drive the net. Bruins steal it. Working it up now. Back the other way. Here comes Boston into the offensive zone. Holla trailing Marshawn, pulls it around, and finishes the game! Brad Marshawn with his second goal, and it's a 3-2 Boston win! They pull the two points out of Montreal! And that is gonna do it for this one! The Boston Bruins win in overtime, 3-2! Over the Montreal Canadiens, and it is Brad Marchand's second goal of the game. He scored the first one, and he scored the last. It's his 17th career overtime goal, which is the most in Boston Bruins franchise history. Brad Marchand is now the leading overtime scorer in Boston Bruins history. And what a fantastic move there. Pulling it around Jake Allen. And beautiful move by Marshawn. Fake shot. Pulls it around. Easy open net. And Boston takes the 3-2 win and the two points here tonight. Their next game comes on Thursday against Tampa Bay. And holy cow, what a huge game that is going to be against the Lightning on Thursday night. I will be live for that game, but I will be live for some games before that as well. Tomorrow night, we've got Columbus against Pittsburgh. We've got a doubleheader coming up on Wednesday night as well. Going to be some great streams coming up on the channel. I just dropped the stream schedule in the chat, so you guys can take a look at that if you want to know what my next few games will be. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Really, really, really appreciate it. Awesome game tonight. Awesome Bruins win. And uh, Marshy gets it done in overtime. Thank you guys so much for the support. Please don't forget, it really does mean a lot if you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't. I cover the entire NHL, so fans of all teams are welcome and wanted here. Just trying to build a community where everybody can come together, have some fun, and enjoy some hockey. And... Uh, that's going to do it for me here tonight. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Have, uh, have a great uh, day tomorrow. And uh, I'll be talking to you all very, very soon. Thank you guys again for all the support. And see you all later.